We'd like to thank Rascal Flats for their hospitality earlier this season when we recorded that and uh, they're great fans of the Big Ten and we're great fans of them. It's senior day here at Northwestern 21 football players playing their final game here at Ryan Field and Carissa Thompson third member of our team you know when you go through a career and a season it's there are high points and low points you persevere through it and this is the reward uh, I can attest to that but yeah Northwestern's win over Iowa was maybe a defining moment most people would think but in fact Coach Fitzgerald looks back to week three in their loss to Syracuse. Six starters were out with injuries. They had to go deep into that depth chart. But what he said is, I learned a lot about my guys that day. And unfortunately, the Wildcats have sustained a lot of injuries at key positions, but they haven't given up. And 21 seniors today, as you mentioned, Wayne, ran out of that tunnel for the last time and hit that trust yourself sign. But talking to Mike Kafka yesterday, he said, I usually would be probably more emotional. But luckily, thanks to our hard work, it might be our last game at Ryan Field, but not our last game of the season. Indeed, Chris, a well put, and that's kind of the feeling of the players we talked to yesterday here at Northwestern. There's Brett Bielema, a tremendous job he's done with this program. Take a look at that record. Only played Northwestern once in his career as head coach so far. Today's Porsche keys to the game. What do you think, Seymour? Well, for Wisconsin, they want a big boy in Northwestern's defense, kind of like Debo from the movie Friday. They want to get in and hammer them. <laughs> and then they got to be space invaders. Cover the grass, tackle in space for Northwestern. Use that emotional fuel of senior day to get a great start. And then you have to get population, get hats on John Clay. No question about it. And what a beautiful, spectacularly beautiful late afternoon here in Evanston in the middle of November. My goodness, it could not be a nicer day for football. Big Ten College Football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips HD, available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. Northwestern wins the toss, and they will receive. Here's the student section. Final Saturday of the Big Ten season. And like I said, you know, I'll tell you what, partner, when you guys were in that magical run to Pasadena 95, I was here for a late season game when you guys played Iowa, and it was snowy and it was yeah. overcast, and I've never been that cold in the well, they, press box they had here. Plowing snow all day. It, yes, it is indeed. spectacular out. But uh, this is a great day for football in the Big Ten. Wonderful to have you with us. And again, this has developed into a real fine series since the mid 90s. Wisconsin leads it overall. The home team has been dominant. First meeting was way back. I wasn't even around for it, but our producer, Jim Ressler, was in the truck that day. <laughs> and uh, we are set to go. The last time these two teams played here in Evanston, 99 points and over 1,100 yards of offense. We're underway, and it's great to have you with us. Stephen Simmons to the 20. Out to the 25 yard line. David Gilbert makes the tackle. So it'll be first down for Mike Kafka and company. Kafka, a senior out of Chicago, Illinois. You talk about ups and downs, as Carissa mentioned earlier. He has persevered through some ups and downs in his career to take over as the quarterback of the Wildcats. His 65.8% completion mark is number one in the Big Ten. First and 10, and a quick toss to Dunsmore, the tight end who was flexed off the line at a gain of about five yards. We'll tell Velveeta starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Again, they'll spread the field with these receivers. Marks Hausen among the leaders nationally in receptions per game. The offensive line, solid group up front with five seniors in that line. And here's quick toss to the flank on Cannon, shakes loose a one defender. And is out close to the first down. McFadden, St. Jean were there on the tackle. Gain of about five, and uh, let's see, they're just short of that first down. And Wayne, we're getting a quick snapshot of Northwestern's offense. High percentage throws, short passes, allow guys to go out and make plays. Good block outside by Brewer to spring Concanna. Third and short for Northwestern. Concanna. Quick move off the right side gets the first down. Seymour, I want to correct something I said a moment ago. Northwestern does not have a senior on its offensive line. Deiter is a redshirt freshman. Bartles, the uh, right guard, a sophomore. Uh, Burkett, a sophomore at center. 
Keegan Grant a junior at left guard and Al Netter a sophomore left tackle. This program is well stocked for the future well beyond today. And look here no running backs back here Northwestern two spread five wide. Pressure coming pass knocked down incomplete. I believe that was Jeff Staley who got a piece of that football quick pass to the right side Staley got his arms in the air. We'll tell Velveeta starting lineup on the defensive line. There's a look at Staley who knocked down that last pass. Schofield and Watt, excellent defensive ends. The linebacking core, it flows to the football very well, led by Palmer St. Jean, Chris Portland, an emerging freshman. And then the secondary, those safeties will hit you. Northwestern goes quickly, and that pass dropped incomplete by Brewer, a former quarterback, Smith defending near the 44-yard line. Well, that time, Kafka put the ball right on the numbers. Brewer has to make that catch. Working the wide field and you notice Northwestern they are up tempo. They want to get Wisconsin. They know the big heavies for Wisconsin. Get them running get them playing in space and try and wear them down early third and ten. This is not in the game plan. This is not what was what Northwestern wants third and long. They can't be behind the chains like this consistently. That's Mitchell a tight end in motion. Kafka alone in the shotgun. Good protection up front. Kafka going over the top and he's got his man juggling it out of bounds. Is it a catch? They're ruling a catch at the 42 yard line. Zeke marks Housen, and I'm sure Tom Quinn will take a look at it upstairs. Well anytime you get zone defense which Wisconsin's running you like to get corner routes. Northwestern marks Housen. One thing he does extremely well is run routes with detail. He can find the spots and he makes the catch. Great hands. Mark Townsend has come on. What a story. He caught one pass prior to this year in his Northwestern career. He's a transfer out of the University of Wisconsin Platteville. First down Northwestern on the 21 yard gain. RB Fields in the backfield and the quick freshman gets it up the middle and slices through down to the 36 yard line. Gain of six. You take a look at first downs on offense Northwestern. Now they get about 77 plays average 77 plays again a game. In Wisconsin defensively they deny first downs. Well and Northwestern has to stay ahead of the chains and you do that on first and second down so that you can get to third and two third and one manageable situation. Second and four. They empty the backfield. Quick toss to Fields that pass led him back toward the backfield. He makes a diving grab and they're going to mark it. Very close to the first down near the 32 yard line of Wisconsin. This is pretty good grab by a running back. Watch him go out lay out. And I think the quarterback had to throw it there because Devin Smith was coming up from behind. So if he leads him with that pass. Smith has an interception. They mark it as a first down a back hit pass to the running back. Harvey Fields who's in motion to the offensive backfield. Here comes Fields bouncing to the outside. He has I would say the best quickness of the running backs for Northwestern. RB Fields gets about five on that play and Fields is a freshman out of Alta Loma California. Northwestern a little window dressing here they're going to motion Fields in the backfield. He gets it finds a little crease picking up a few yardage so far Northwestern methodically moving down the field. Eleventh play of the drive right here. Second down. Kafka. Brewer touchdown. Dropped one earlier on this particular drive, but that time, right on the money was Kafka. Good hands by Brewer. 26 yard touchdown play. And he made good on it. Northwestern will take their shots down the field. They lull you to sleep with short routes. Then you hit you on a big post. Check, please, Brewer. Stefan Demos for the point after. Mark Townsend to hold him right down the boulevard. Impressive opening drive engineered by Mike Kafka. Northwestern goes the distance to the house. Andrew Brewer on the reception is 7 0 Wildcats. Pat Fitzgerald told us yesterday, he said, I don't think Wisconsin is equipped to stop our spread if we execute. And that's exactly what they did. Ten plays, 75 yards. And what you're going to get is a post cut. What Brewer does well is he gets the defensive back to open his hips up and then he snaps them off. 
great job. Again, Northwestern loves to lull you to sleep with four and five yard routes. Then they want to blast the top off the defense. Coverage not bad by Niles Brinkley. That was a beautiful throw. Dropped it right in over the top. Anderson across the 20 to the 25 yard line. Jacob Schmidt, a Wisconsin native, on the stop. The quarterback for Wisconsin is an Illinois native out of Rolling Meadows, Palatine Friend High School. Scott Tolzine, he has been outstanding. And the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week last week against Michigan. Second time he's been so honored, but he was 16 of 24, 240 yards, four touchdowns and an interception last week. And what is the key about that is Wisconsin actually was a pass team to set up the run. It'll be interesting to see how they attack Northwestern. John Clay, the tailback, and they fake the reverse. Over the top, Tolzien, he's got the fastest receiver in his core out there, and Anderson may have lost it in the sun. Isaac Anderson, and we saw the start of Tolzien's season against Northern Illinois way back when Started with an 80 yard touchdown pass. This could have been a similar situation, but I think you lost it in the sun. Well, and it was a beautiful throw. Watch how he works towards the other hash. I mean, that's the destination point. Great ball by Tolzien. Anderson has to make that catch. Look out. Look at the sun coming in, though. He's staring right back at it. Second and 10 to play. Peters, the safety, came up to make a low hit pickup of about five. We'll tell Velveeta starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Clay leads the Big Ten in rushing. Anderson, great speed. Nick Toon, the emerging star of that receiving core. And up front, Peter Kahn's done a great job of that offensive line. Gabe Karimi, the most consistent. Third down for Wisconsin. Wayne, I mean, this is what Northwestern wants. Get Wisconsin off schedule third and three or more. Third and five at the moment. Tolzien, good protection. Lots of time. Wide open Anderson across the 45-50 in the Northwestern Territory. I'll tell you what, Jordan Maben made the tackle. He may have been the guy getting beat on that play, but that's a long time to cover a fleet receiver like Isaac Anderson. Yeah, and I'll go right back at you. If you're going to give Tolzien time like that, he will surgically take apart a defense. He has great command of the offense. They love to work against zone, and as you can see, he's very precise with the football. 24 yard pass play first and 10 at the Northwestern 46. Play. <laughs> Try to get behind those road graders. And uh, got about two yards on that play. Take a look at the Northwestern defensive line. Corey Wooten, an All-America candidate coming off a devastating knee injury last year, just rounding into form now. Nate Williams leads that linebacking core. And uh, Bryce McNall gets a start here today. The secondary, Sherrick McManus, the best of the cover people in the back four. Second down, about eight. Hendricks in motion. Hendricks, the tight end. Play straight ahead. He wanted to go left, but Jack DiNardo cut him off and made the tackle short gain of a yard or two and it's third down for Wisconsin. This defense has been scarred by injury. 21 different starters overall. Nine different starters in the secondary alone. Well they hold their defensive meetings in the training room. Yes. North Northwestern's <laughs> been banged up but they've been resilient and they've kept fighting. Third down. Blitz coming. Tolzien is hit and sack. They didn't have enough blockers for Brad Phillips. Loss of eight, fourth down. Didn't have enough blockers is right. And great feel by Phillips to hit this blitz right at the right time, coming right in the teeth of the offensive line. Tolzien didn't have a chance. Good call by Mike Hankwitz right at the right time. Andrew Brewer will be looking up into the sun. Brad Nortman on in punt formation. He's placed 11 inside the 20. Brewer, fair catch signal, makes the catch in rather tenuous fashion at the 14-yard line. 7 nothing Northwestern early going first quarter. In the gray at Northwestern cap, that's Mike Pankowitz, the defensive coordinator of these Wildcats. He was a coordinator for two years under Brett Bielema. 
up in Madison was a co defense coordinator along with the current defense coordinator Dave Doran. Well Wayne blitzes are all about time and you're going to see Phillips do a nice job of timing this thing up holds his water timing and feel beautiful first down Northwestern Con Cannon right at the defense for about two yards maybe three. Wisconsin's very stout inside against the run. And in fact, in conference play, they're number one in terms of run defense. So teams don't have a great deal of success running against them, particularly inside the tackles. They're heavy on pass plays on that last drive, but it's ironic to, under, to note that Northwestern actually technically runs a little bit more than they pass. But they set up everything with a pass. Kafka unable to get loose, and that was J.J. Watt. Watt was a tight end in high school, so he's still got pretty good feet, even though he's grown into a full-blown defensive end, and he made a nice play, lost a four. Good feet and even better strength. Look at him disengage the lineman and able to play the piano, as we call it, run down the line and chase. Pat Fitzgerald said one thing about this spread offense, you need a quarterback who is a threat to run. He doesn't have to run a lot, but he's got to be a threat to run. Kafka going deep for Brewer, overthrown. Brewer pretty well covered. Coverage provided downfield by Antonio Finellis. There is a penalty marker down to the offensive backfield. And it's a hold against Northwestern. Todd Gearlings is the official. 72. Holding 72. Offense. That penalty is declined. Results in a fourth down. Typically when you play against speed guys as Wisconsin as they have up front with O'Brien Schofield you can expect to see flags and holding calls. Take a look at the time of possession number. And Wisconsin on top of that chart because they move the ball move it on the ground. Stefan Demos this is where they've really struggled short kick here and a lunging grab made by David Gilreath in Northwestern territory. So the Badgers in plus territory start their second drive of the day trailing seven nothing. Hey partner are you sure we're not in Madison. <laughs> it felt like that drive into the game today Wisconsin well represented. Yes they are. Well these two universities I think they're about the closest two in the Big Ten outside of Michigan and Michigan State they're only about 150 miles separating the two. 67 for the two Michigans. They kept Purdue and Indiana just a little bit farther away from each other. First and 10, John Clay pounding away. And boy, he draws a crowd. Pick up of one. Check in with Dave Rebson, Big Ten Network Studio, Prestone Game Break. How's the old oaken bucket going, Dave? Purdue can put some yards on the board, especially through the air. They put, what, 62 points on the board last year in Joe Tiller's last game against Indiana? Those are the two best teams with bad records. Second down. Short drop Tolzien. Quick toss to the flank. Nick Toon's first catch of the day under the coverage of Sherrick McManus to the 41-yard line. Well, they are honoring the memory of Matt Hartle, who was a uh, great player here, a fullback uh, on the uh, Rose Bowl team of 1996. He passed away in 1999 due to Hodgkin's disease. He also lost his mother to that same disease. And his dad, one of the honorary captains here today, standing by with Carissa Thompson. After the play, we'll get down to her. Second down, make a third down for Wisconsin. Gilreath on the reverse. Oh, and a great play made by Brad Phillips. My goodness, he played off his block and blew that thing up for a loss of five. Well, Phillips has made some splash plays today. And he's really, he's a safety, but he's built like a linebacker. When you look at his measurables, he's 6'4". You're going to see him at the bottom of the screen. Watch him get off a block. Gets off the block, gets to Gilreath, bringing the attitude for the Cats. Phillips, the senior out of Export, Pennsylvania. Norton in punt formation. Brewer lets it go and it sails into the end zone. Well, we mentioned Matt Hartle 
being honored here today and his dad Bill standing by with Carissa Thompson. Carissa. Yeah the Wildcats biggest fan Bill I'm having to contain you down here you're having so much fun. What does it mean for you to come back and be an honorary captain today for your uh, son. Oh uh, this is uh, such a wonderful uh, uh, a moment in our life and in the Hartle family and all the families that surround the Hartle family. And uh, with Pat Fitzgerald and I met his dad today, it was just so wonderful. You guys have done an amazing job of raising money for a scholarship in honor of your son. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the fundraising mainly come from uh, Sam Bellis Easy and also uh, Rob Johnson and also... Uh, uh, all sorts of people contribute. A lot of money was raised in honor of your son. And the guy you're very familiar with is up in our booth, Chris Martin. Why don't you throw it up to him and say hello? He's got a lot to say about your son. A lot of, a lot of quality time spent on that team. I remember Chris very well. I nice see him on the Big Ten channel yeah, every week, Chris. I'm one of your favorite Chris? fans. Oh, I, I'm I waving. Guys. I am I, waving. I love that team. It, but for that team in 95 and 96, it takes 100 people, 100 good football players yeah. to, to make it really work. And when they went to the Rose Bowl, it was just unbelievable. Very special. Thank you, Bill, for your time. Thank you. Andrew Brewer inside Badger territory to the 41-yard line. A beautiful seam strike from Mike Kafka for 34 yards. Well, anytime you have cover two defense, receivers like to work that seam route. That time, Brewer doing a nice job of finding the cavity in the defense. Kafka puts it on the money, moving the chains for Northwestern. You know, I'll tell you, just a very emotional day, senior day here at Northwestern. The honoring, uh, the announcement of the scholarship in honor of Matt Hartle, and certainly those of us who covered the Big Ten remember him well. Kafka on the run, and he throws it away. Well, Chris, you played with Matt Hartle. Mm -hmm. the, that two-year span, 95-96, the most wins ever in the two-year history of Northwestern football, 18 wins. Talk a little bit about that and what Hartle meant to this team. Well, number one, it was great to see his dad. And Matt Hartle, on the field, he was the epitome of toughness. But off the field, he was the epitome of character and integrity and really everything that Pat Fitzgerald is all about. They were extremely close. And in that Rose Bowl run, Matt Hartle was as important as Fitzgerald, as Darnell Autry, Dwayne Bates. He opened up a lot of holes for Darnell. Simmons breaking through the other side of that play, right up the middle, right at the defense. First down to the 29-yard line of Wisconsin. Maragos, the safety, made the tackle 11 yards downfield. Northwestern sort of keeping Wisconsin off balance. They peppered in some run plays inside, a little chicanery moving guys around with motion. But defensively, you want to see the Badgers tighten up inside and get Northwestern behind the chains. Mike Kafka off to a hot start. And that's R.B. Fields in the backfield with Kafka on first down. Going for Brewer. Barely out of reach. Oaken Bucket update. Dave Rebson of the Big Ten Network studio. Preston game break, Dave. Wayne, it continues to be all Purdue. Joey Elliott here with a four-yard touchdown pass to Dan Durkee. 14 to nothing Boilers, although Indiana just brought the ensuing kickoff back right around midfield. I'll tell you something, Dave. Indiana is not going to quit in that game. I mean, the, the, there's no question about that. That's the, something that the Hoosiers have shown all season long through a season of disappointments. Tremendous resiliency. Second and ten, Northwestern. Fields deployed in motion to the backfield with Kafka. RB Fields and a great play by O'Brien Schofield. He played off the block of the tight end at Brendan Mitchell to make the play. And by the way, if you're looking for the Purdue at Indiana game, go to Big10Network.com, search Game Finder to see where you can find that game. And that last play, great play by Schofield, and you see why he's one of the leaders in tackles for loss. He's the up-the-field edge guy for Wisconsin, and he wreaks havoc in the backfield. It is third down and nine. Mark Townsend in the slot, bottom of your screen. Kafka looking that way. Waited a bit too long, and the blitzing Maragos, the safety. Hit the quarterback as he let it go, and the pass fell harmlessly incomplete. So it is fourth down. Watching Marigos, he's just a player that has great feel, knack, and an intense understanding of the game. Way to time that up. Gets to Kafka, who holds it because of the coverage down the field. 
Good pressure by Wisconsin. Stefan Demos for a field goal of roughly 46 yards. He missed from 47, 50, and 31 yards on a beautiful day in Champaign last week. He was 14 of 16 in the field goal department prior to that time. Got it to the upright, and it is good. Stefan Demos, who was struggling in pregame, nails that one. And Northwestern increases its advantage to 10 0. Wayne Larrabee, along with Chris Martin and Carissa Thompson, back at Northwestern. We'd like to, at this time, pass along. On behalf of all of us at the Big Ten at work, our heartfelt condolences to the family of Chris Spielman, the former Ohio State linebacker who lost his wife Stephanie this past week. Stephanie Spielman passed away earlier this week after a long battle with cancer. Our prayers and thoughts are with the Spielman family, especially our colleague Chris and his four children, Madison, Noah, Macy, and Audrey. The Spielman uh, family raised millions of dollars uh, for breast cancer research in uh, Stephanie's name, and she was a major proponent of that, obviously in her final years. 10 nothing Northwestern Demos with his kickoff taken by one of the up backs that's Chris Borland the linebacker. Jeremy Matthews got to him first. The United States Marine Corps salutes Mike Kafka, our leader of the game thus far. Six of 12 passing, 95 yards at a touchdown to Andrew Brewer. Northwestern scoring drive a moment ago. Eight plays, 52 yards. There is a penalty marker down. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 25, kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. Stephen Simmons, the uh, running back, must have gotten in a little bit late on that tackle. I think for Northwestern on senior day, it's so important to play with controlled emotion. See on the left side of the screen. Engage with the blocker. That's what you expect when you have a emotionally charged ball game. Northwestern rolling on its first couple of drives. Wisconsin yet to get on track and they go to the freshman now a different look a different feel to the running game when Monty Ball the freshman out of a Wentzville Missouri comes into the game and he's a good one he's going to be a star before long well he most certainly is and he's a change of pace guy that they can he can run him inside or outside also but at any moment he can take it the distance and it's so important for Wisconsin right now to establish run do dominance and put together and sustain a long drive. Ball is the lone setback behind Tolzien. Quick toss to the flat, Nick Toon. Good move to get around the first defender, the linebacker, and then out of bounds with a first down. At the 45-yard line, just inside the 45 of Northwestern, Nick Toon, outstanding run. They'll get him, shake him loose in some of those uh, wide receiver screens. And I love watching young wide receivers develop. Obviously, this kid's got great DNA. You know about his dad. Big week last week, but this is a kid that's just, he's going up and making plays. You can just tell that the game is starting to slow down for him. He's working on his route content, finishing in the end zone and posterizing a lot of defensive backs. That was quite a finish over a good defensive back in Donovan Warren of Michigan. Timeout taken by Wisconsin. Timeout. Wisconsin, their first. Under a minute to go, first quarter. So Wisconsin takes a timeout to talk things over. Action in the Big Ten earlier today, of course, the uh, traditional rivalry game, and it was hard fought as always. Ohio State and Michigan up in Ann Arbor, and Iowa and Minnesota renewed their uh, rivalry in Iowa City today, and here's how it looks right now on the scoreboard. Purdue on top of Indiana. Iowa shut out Minnesota, and then uh, Ohio State prevailed over Michigan. Illinois off this week will play at Cincinnati next week. The updated standings. Wisconsin had Michigan been able to upset Ohio State would have had a shot at tying for the Big Ten championship with a win today but that's going to go by the boards. But these two teams really what's at stake here today both are going to a bowl game Chris but what bowl game they go to well today could go a long way to determining that I sure. mean the winner here today probably goes to a New Year's Day bowl game. 
First and ten. Ball. Phillips made the hit. Gain of four. And, and like we said, much to be decided as far as where people are going in the bowl picture. But sure. Wisconsin school record eighth consecutive season they'll be going to a bowl. Program Barry Alvarez took over that program. It was bleeding red. And I'm not talking about the color on the jersey. <laughs> and that was back in the 1989. And boy, did he turn things around. Tolzine, nice pocket protection. Good throw over the middle. Got the tight end. Garrett Graham down to the 20-yard line. First down, Wisconsin, 20-yard pickup. And if Garrett Graham isn't the best pass catching tight end in the Big Ten, he's certainly in the top three. Good job of working interior cuts. He's the number two option. Normally, Tolzien's going to go with Nick Toon or either get it to Garrett Graham. Well, you saw Brian Peters on him, and that's a load for any safety to cover Garrett Graham. First Up quarter comes to a close. Northwestern's been impressive. Wisconsin's on the drive. Football presented by the United States Marine Corps. First and ten, Wisconsin Tolzien on the first play of the second quarter. Inside the five. The Badgers off to a slow start here today are starting to crank it up by going to the tight end, Garrett Graham. 18-yard pickup. Well, and Wisconsin finishes drives in the red zone better than any other team in the Big Ten Conference. They're number one in coming into this game, Wayne. 39 of 41. They know how to punch it in the end zone. Northwestern second in red zone defense. John Clay. They brought in Mickey Turner to play the fullback spot. Brian Peters knifed in from the secondary to make a hit for Northwestern. But he had some help. No game. There's the number in the red zone this season. Best in the Big Ten, as Chris mentioned. And it starts up front for Wisconsin. They get great push. You know, Chris, it's interesting. I always thought the teams that run the ball well are usually good in the red zone yeah. for some reason. And then it helps when you have a pounder that's 250 pounds in the background, number 32. Kendricks in motion. Clay following him and muscling his way to the goal line. Touchdown! Big John Clay, 6'2", 250. The sophomore out of nearby Racine, Wisconsin, would not be denied. And he used every pound of that 250 yards. And this is just will. Will and determination by John Clay. He puts Phillips on roller skates, pushing him in the end zone. That is just imposing your will to the defense. Big play, big finish for the Badgers. Very interesting on that drive. That run was set up by the pass, not the run for Wisconsin. So Once again, yep. And we saw them open up the running game with the passing game last week against Michigan, and it looks like that's what they're going to have to do here today. The extra point is good by Philip Welch. Seven plays, 72 yards. The Badgers cap it on a two-yard touchdown plunge by John Clay. Carissa Thompson and Chris Martin, Wayne Larravee back in Evanston. Got a good one brewing here, and we expected a good one between these two teams, both playing their best football of the season. Simmons on the return. He's got a hole across the 30. Rope down near the 35-yard line by Devin Smith. 33-yard return. Good job of Simmons finding the crease. Remember, it's important to have lane integrity. Guys get displaced, and it usually leads to a crease. Nice job of Simmons of finding it. Yeah. Out of the gate in fine fashion here this afternoon. First and 10 at the 35. Kung Cannon fumble the football. Badgers have it, or do they? In on that play was Al Netter. The indication from the linesman 
And now from the referee, Wisconsin football at the Northwestern 37-yard line. And Wisconsin showing you the fight and tenacity that they played with throughout conference play. Again, good penetration up front. All about ball security when you're running it inside. And Javery McFadden has secured that football just in time. Good job of dialing it up. Now you got a sudden change. See if Wisconsin can capitalize. This season, they've done well in capitalizing off of turnovers. The last eight plus games, they have forced now 20 turnovers to update that from today. First down. John Clay down to the 31 yard line. Six yard gain, auto owners insurance, game leaders. Tolzien on the mark, couple of big pass plays, 20 and 18 yards to Garrett Graham. Kafka has thrown a, a touchdown pass to Brewer, and Andrew Brewer, two receptions for 60 yards. And Wayne, prior to that last carry, John Clay only has 10 yards on the day, but you can tell he's starting to get greased up. Yeah, it takes 15 to 20 carries before he's uh, working a lather there, <laughs> partner. <laughs> we haven't even started this one. Clay taken down from behind. That was Nate Williams, the safe, the uh, middle linebacker who knifed in from behind to make the play. Gain of a yard, maybe, and it's third down and two, Wisconsin. Big fella. He doesn't get stopped very often. No. And it's always yards after initial contact with him. He's always going forward. You never see John Clay going back. Gil Wraith at the top of your screen. Running formation for Northwestern. Lance Kendricks in motion. Here's Clay. If he got it, it wasn't by much. I don't think he got it. Excellent flow to the football by the Northwestern Wildcats. Bruce McNall starting at linebacker on the outside today. Made the initial penetration on that particular play. And they're short. Well, in Wisconsin, number one in the conference on third and fourth down conversions. Looks like they're going for it here. Hankowitz and his defense have to stop a fourth and short. Tolzien. Clay jumps over the right side of the line for the first down. Boy, he took a heck of a hit. But they're very close. They may want to measure this. Well, that's usually pretty automatic when you have this kid. Peters, Brian Peters, the safety came up late a lick. <laughs> yeah. Big running back. Watch this. And that usually happens when you leave your feet. And uh, Phelps was there on the tackle. But from the other angle, we saw Brian, uh, oh, Brian Peters jump in there. <laughs> and as you suggested, they're measuring it. And they got it. So first down for the Badgers. Football just inside the 27-yard line of Northwestern. Wildcats, if you join us late, jumped on top 10-0. And Wisconsin came back at its last drive. Seven plays, 72 yards. John Clay's two-yard touchdown run capped it, but they opened up the ground game through the air to the tight end Garrett Graham with receptions of 20 and 18 yards. And we've seen Wisconsin pound it and pound it, so is now the chance to go play action pass and test that Northwestern secondary. Badger's a little late in getting everybody together here. <laughs> a little bit of a fire drill. And in and out. Seven to go on the play clock for Tolzien. Tolzien on the key play. Back over the middle. Leaping grab. Touchdown, Garrett Graham. Great play call by Paul Chris of Wisconsin, an even better execution. Great job of Tolzien putting that ball right in there to his reliable guy, Garrett Graham, and you just felt that they were going to take their shot down the field. Great execution by the Badgers. Philip Welch with a point after. 
Wisconsin starting to get its offense rolling. 27 yard pass play to Garrett Graham and the Badgers have the lead. Welcome back to Northwestern. Wisconsin has scored on its last two offensive possessions. Philip Welch kicking it away. And this is Stephen Simmons to the 10, to the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Philip Welch slows him down, but can't stop him. 50, 45, 40, and out of bounds. Aaron Henry finally forced him out. Inside the Badger 35 yard line. 64 yard kickoff return. Stephen Simmons. Great individual effort by Simmons. He gets the blocking up front and hits the crease. But if you're Wisconsin, you have to minimize the damage. Get him on the ground right there. Sloppy tackling allows him to pick up extra yardage. Now it gives Northwestern optimal field position. Off a fumble by Scott Concannon. Wisconsin went five plays, 37 yards to take the lead. Now, can Northwestern take advantage of this kickoff return? And there's a quick flag down. Ball start, 63. Offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. Keegan Grant, the guilty party, unfortunately, for Northwestern. Wayne, you're going to see the left side of the screen. Graham come in late. Now, if you're Northwestern on that last touch, and you have to know the scouting reports. You know that Tolzien is in harmony with his tight end. You got to find him. First and 15. Kafka drills the middle, and he has a first down. Inside the 25, or very close to it. Drake Dunsmore, the reception. Jay Valai on the tackle. And they're going to move the chains, or are they? Nope. Yeah, they're going to move them. There we go. Dunsmore, sort of a hybrid move guy, calls it super back for Northwestern. Blitz coming. Kafka. And unable to rein that one in is the wide receiver, Sidney Stewart. Sydney's been the most consistent over the last three games. That was a hot read by Kafkin, pass thrown just behind the receiver. And that's because Wisconsin was getting up the field. They called a blitz that time. So he tried to hit that sight adjust to Stewart. Second down. And we have another timeout called by Wisconsin. Timeout. We do. That's their Wisconsin. second timeout of this first their half. Second. You could say an unscheduled timeout for Brett Bielema and company. 10.33 to go. Second quarter. Northwestern on the drive and Wisconsin leading by four. You know, it's interesting when we talked to Coach Bielema, you know, he made the point that Northwestern forces you to play a clean game. You know, when you start to make mistakes against this team, that's usually when they make you pay. But he knows that his guys have been resilient. They played hard all season long, and he's been confident in their game plan. Well, the Northwestern Wildcats debuted the season opener with an easy win over Towson. But that was not a portent of things to come. Northwestern would face some ups and downs, and they had to come from behind to beat Eastern Michigan here at home. Then they went to Syracuse, where they got down 17-0, rallied back, but fell at Syracuse. Minnesota was next. At home, they lost a shootout, 35-24. Got back on track with a come-from-behind effort against Purdue. Second down. Kafka, RB Fields, taken down by Blake Sorensen. Let's finish the uh, season review for Northwestern. Out of conference, they defeated Miami of Ohio with a great defensive effort. Then, at Michigan State, they fell to the Spartans by 10. Returned home and fell big to Indiana. Down 27 to nothing. They rallied for a 29-28 win. And Penn State next up, a loss here at home, followed by a win, a stunning upset of Iowa on the road, and then the win last week against Illinois. Mark Towson's got the first down. Devin Smith makes the tackle. Seven-yard gain. 
Markshausen and Kafka develop their chemistry as a passing combination while playing on the scout team here at uh, Northwestern. Well, you look at the blocking up top. I mean, great time for Kafka. And as you stated, they seem to have a nice rhythm. First and ten, Kafka the pump fake now goes to the end zone. Incomplete. Smith had fallen on the play. The pass intended for Sidney Stewart overthrown. Northwestern that time trying to pop a double move to Stewart. It was a sluggo, as we call it, a slant and go route. Defensive back, you see it right there. Will grab and involve, but a misfire for Kafka. Second and ten. Football just inside the 13 of Wisconsin. There's the red zone number, 84%, only seventh of the Big Ten. Kafka slips a defender, gets inside the 10, down near the six. Remember what I said earlier, Pat Fitzgerald told us, you must have a quarterback that can threaten to run the football to make this offense work. Well, yeah, because you have to game plan for that, and that draws a lot of defensive coordinators mad. But this is where Kafka's in his finest moment. He loves to be able to tuck it away and pop for tough yardage. He was unable to play much against Iowa due to a hamstring injury three weeks ago, but he's healthy now. Blitz coming, and the offensive right tackle, Neil Deiters, flinched. Ball start, 79, offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Bring you up to date on what happened here. Northwestern, Andrew Brewer, 26-yard touchdown reception, first drive of the game for Northwestern. Stefan Demos capped the second possession for the Wildcats with this field goal. And then Wisconsin got it rolling. John Clay capping a long touchdown run, or long drive, I should say. And then this over the top following a turnover by Northwestern. And that pass to Garrett Graham for the touchdown and the lead for Wisconsin. Third down. Kafka to the end zone. Diving grab Brewer. Touchdown. Sensational catch. seeing seniors step up on senior day. A great layout by Brewer. Excellent play call. But look at the ball placement by Kafka. We've got to hold it all the way through, and he did. They are taking a look at it upstairs, and uh, I don't think they're going to overturn it on the field. But and the thing about Andrew Brewer, he's a former quarterback. Matter of fact, the last time these two teams played, Brewer was at quarterback uh, for Northwestern. And now at wide receiver, he has been quite a compliment to that receiving core. He's the big play quarterback. Started three games at quarterback in 2006 against Wisconsin in Madison in 2006. 94 After yards. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Brewer against the Badgers in Madison at quarterback 94 yards passing 80 yards receiving and here today his second touchdown reception Brewer now three catches 72 yards and two touchdowns and you have to think that some of that is feeding off of the fuel of senior day and Demos for the point after And it is good. I hope you've tightened your seat belts. We've got a good one going at Evanston. Seven plays, 34 yards for the Wildcats. They're back on top. Brewer's touchdown reception puts Northwestern back on top. Earlier this season, he completed a 24-yard pass to Mike Kafka for a touchdown and caught a 39-yard touchdown pass from Kafka up at Syracuse. Here's the kickoff by Demos. It's up for grabs, a short kick. Northwestern may have it. Demetrius Dugar got down there in a hurry. I'm not sure if he came away with it. He did. 
And we talked about the importance of protecting the football when you're entering construction zone. Anytime you're going into the fray, you have to make sure you're protecting the football, but great job of going in and stripping it out. Jacob Schmidt was at the bottom of that pile as well. He got a lick in there. And I think what they're checking now was his knee down before the ball came loose. Didn't look like it, but just check it from this angle. That's a good look at it by our crew. We saw the knee was down, but we don't know where the ball knee down right there. When does the ball come out? Looked like it was on its way out. But we'll let the uh, we'll let the professionals handle <laughs> yeah. that. See, Mark, you and I are just sitting here guessing. <laughs> you know, you, you talk about Jacob Schmidt. He's a Wisconsin native out of Rhinelander, Wisconsin, up north, as we say. Just a sophomore. This is a big game for him to play against uh, the UW. Well, and doing it on special team. Tom Quinn on the left, taking a look at all the angles, left and right. Well, you see the knee down right here, Wayne. And then you can see his hand around the ball right there. That's a great shot. Outstanding. After further review, the runner was down in possession of the ball. First down, Wisconsin. Well done in all areas, and especially that last picture we saw, Chris. And that was a super job by the crew to get that from the end zone camera. But uh, just outstanding. And Tom Quinn made the right call in replay. And Tom, by the way, is ending his career as an official, which has spanned over five decades here today at Northwestern as the replay official. He began officiating in the Big Ten back in 1976. 33 years as an official technical advisor, replay official. Officiated many bowl games over the years. And, and I'll tell you, one of the class gentlemen, and there are so many of them, and I know people go nuts about this time of year with officiating and all that and, and the calls they have to make, but the people who are officiating football in the Big Ten are some of the have great integrity, and he is one of them. John Clay. Boy, they got him moving sideways, C Mark, and that's the way to contain a big back like that. No gain. No question about it. When you have a physical downhill runner, you want to make him go east west. And we'll see it right here. Watch how they get him to go laterally. So he wants to go straight ahead, but they're bouncing him out. Good job of fronting him. Clay is a strong lower, lower unit runner. So he's going to go through arm tackle. 11 carries, 20 yards for Clay. Kendricks in motion. Tolzien rolling. Little pitch and catch with Lance Kendricks ushered out of bounds in front of the Wisconsin bench by the linebacker David Arnold. Six yard gain. Tolzien's very accurate when he rolls out. I and mean, he's going to his left, but he does a good job of putting the ball on Kendricks. A precise passer and again great command of the offense. But where Northwestern and coach Pat Fitzgerald wants to keep the Badgers third and three or more. They're third in the conference 48 percent on third down conversions. Tolzien. Incomplete off the hands of Isaac Anderson. It's fourth down Badgers. Time again, Wisconsin, similar to the last play, working the rollout. This ball is going to go off the fingertips of Anderson. It would have had to have been a sensational catch by him. I'm sure Tolzien wishes he had that one back. Brad Nortman came in averaging just under 43 yards per punt. Andrew Brewer back deep. Fair catch signal. Brewers got it straddling the 20 yard line. Late afternoon here in Evanston. Shadows completely engulf the field and soon Musco sports lighting will light it up for us. They're proud to support the Big Ten Network. 
Musco makes sports lighting happen around the globe from NASCAR super speedways and the Olympic Games to collegiate athletics and hometown ball fields. Find out more at Musco.com. Wayne Larravee, Chris Martin, Carissa Thompson. And a beautiful late afternoon in Evanston. First and ten for Northwestern. They go five wides. You can't see the receiver at the bottom of your screen. He's way out of the picture. He's wider than wide. Quick toss the other way. Fields on the reception. And he's got a first down. Demetrius Fields, 14-yard gain, first and 10. That time Northwestern left O'Brien Schofield. You're going to see him. He's going to come from the right side of the screen. But they know because of the short throw, Kath will get it off in time. Ebert in the seam inside the 40 of Wisconsin to the 38 yard line. Brinkley brings him down. Those seam routes have been wide open, Seamart. Well, here's the rub for Wisconsin is that they're not getting pressure without manufacturing it with blitzes. And if you're going to blitz, you're going to put your defensive backs in one on one coverage. But right now, Northwestern's in rhythm at finding the holes in the defense and attacking. Another 20 plus play 24 yards on that play first and 10 Kafka to the flat that was a lateral Markshausen passing deep got a man out there Stewart touchdown to Markshausen and wide open down the sidelines. 38 yard pass play. And where do you find that in the playbook? I mean that was just excellent execution and called at the right time. Caught Wisconsin asleep at the wheel. Stefan Demos point after. High snap placement made and the kick is good. Northwestern comes back with 14 unanswered. They lead by 10 with 6.02 to go, first half. <laughs> Northwestern on top, 24 14. Little razzle dazzle, partner. <laughs> Why not? And you're going to see they're working on Devin Smith, the corner here. He's going to identify the receiver making the catch, and you're going to see him come forward. That allows the receiver to do a double move. There he goes, bites on the fake. And then you got a wide receiver running by himself. Good job of Stewart getting to the paint. Three plays, 80 yards. Demos kickoff through the hands of Anderson. Oh, and he's coming out of there. He didn't have to do that. And he stopped short of the five yard line. That ball was muffed into the end zone he does not have to come out of there with it and that and I don't think a lot of return men understand that Chris and you can see Brett's going to be fuming after that Brett Bielema is the special teams coordinator for Wisconsin that made my that just made my what are they thinking plays of the year I mean make a decision live with the results but you can't have a lackadaisical approach with it. Now Wisconsin's backed up. From the five. Tolzien, first and ten. Play, nice cutback. Bowled over the official, the umpire, and he is hurting. My goodness. He took a shot there. Yes, he did. Brad O'Hara is the umpire. And you could see his head snap back when they hit the ground. And that's the force of a 250 pound bulldozer in John Clay. We got him up quickly. The athletic trainers and medical people were there right away. Watch this. First, he took a hit from Peters. Brian Peters, the uh, safety. And then took on the 250 pound running back. A 
Mike showing some yeah. some toughness yeah. and moxie. Indeed he is. Yep. Oh my! Took it right to the chest, but it was a head going back and hitting the ground. That's what's going to hurt tomorrow. If it doesn't already hurt today, and I'm sure it does. And he's right in the fray. But what you saw there too is John Clay, how he's athletic and make cuts and and he runs with his eyes. Do it right now. <laughs> Text a few for me. <laughs> Gain of eight on that play. Second down and two. Football out of the 13 yard line of Wisconsin. Northwestern with 14 unanswered points after Wisconsin to take it a 14 to 10 lead. Kyle Jefferson at the top of your speed very good speed at the top of your screen tune at the bottom. Kendricks in motion play. Gets the first down as he slides off contact across the 15 to the 17 yard line on a pickup of four. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Jerry Howard and Glenn Mason will be along with all the scores and highlights from today's Big Ten action. Ohio State Michigan the traditional rivals went at it today. Another tradition pack game Minnesota Iowa they'll have the tails the old oaken bucket yeah, being a lot of trophy game. fought over down in uh, Bloomington today. We'll get updated. Tolzien quick toss tune one on one with Phillips races him out of bounds. 24 yard line on a gain of seven yards. Brad Phillips has been busy today. Oh, he's been all over that secondary. Yeah, and, and you know, he's a box safety. So they want to move him close to the line and play him like a like a linebacker. I mean, he's got those measurables at 6'4. I continue to fall in love with Nick Toon, though. He is going to be a true star in this league. Second down. And the quarterback slipped and fell. I'm not sure if one of his linemen stepped on his foot or what the deal was. Like but Tolzien went down. And I think he tangled with the back. The back's going to catch him. Oh, tangled with himself. Yeah, I think he just tripped. That that would be the first what had happened coach moment. <laughs> <laughs> Loss of five. Third down now. Wisconsin a bit behind the chains. As Brad Bielema looks on. Badgers just one of five and third down conversions. Third and nine. Blitz coming from Northwestern. Good protection. Now the pass to the left side. Knocked down incomplete. Vince Brown, who was shifting back from the defensive line position, he was flexed back to the flat. Knocked it down, and it's fourth down. And Tolzien wanted to throw the speed out to tune left side of the screen. Good job getting penetration by Northwestern and Brown getting the hands up. Nate Williams getting a piece of Tolzien. Confirmation time. High snap. Nortman gets it away. Brewer gets away from one man, but not the other. Tackle made by Tony Megna. And it's first down for Northwestern again in good field position. Now for the Rotel Velveeta combination of the game because you can't win without the perfect partner. These two defensive ends have been outstanding this season, but today they've been neutralized. Yeah. And O'Brien Schofield is as good as any end in the country coming off the edge. He is a true pass rush specialist. Mike Kafka, the senior out of Chicago St. Rita High School, in his final game. Here at Ryan Field, back hit pass Dunsmore. They did it in textbook fashion and beat Jay Valai to the 36-yard line of Wisconsin. 26-yard pass play. And what about the ball placement that time by Kafka? This is a back shoulder fade because this is hard for a defensive back to recover and make the play. They're taught to stay on top. Exactly where you want to put that football. Six plays of 20 yards or more by Northwestern already today. Kafka buying time and a short Kafka completion to Sidney Stewart, the junior out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. His brother played for Michigan as a defensive back. 
you know, everybody talks about the different variations of spread, Indiana, you know, Michigan. And I think that the difference for me when I look at and study it on tape, Northwestern rarely has a back in the backfield and they're spread. A lot of times they go empty. You see it again here. See, there's no running back. And I think that's the defining difference with Northwestern spread. And that's why the quarterback being able to run and threaten the defense with his feet as well as his arm. Pass interference here, here on that throw to Markshausen. Homer St. Jean, the guilty party, over the back. But I think that's Pass why. Pass interference. 15. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. Pretty easy call. He got there before the ball. But Seymour, to embellish your point, one of the reasons why Northwestern can do that is because their two quarterbacks, Mike Kafka and Dan Persa, can threaten the defense with their legs. Exactly. And, and, they're, and they're unaccounted for by the defense. First penalty against Wisconsin here today. First down. Kafka over the middle. Nice adjustment on the catch. And that is Jeremy Ebert, and he draws a crowd inside the 25. Looked to be a gain of about six yards. If you look at how Northwestern's attacking Wisconsin, this is the design of this defense. They want you to cover grass, and they think the linebackers of Wisconsin are, are more heavy-footed. They're not like Casillas and Levy from last year who can run, so it's tough for them to cover ground and play in space. Simmons in the backfield with Kafka on second down. That's Dunsmore in motion. Simmons. Just short of the first down. Sorensen, a, a Minnesota native, made the tackle on the play. Sorensen was uh, going to come to Northwestern along with Bryce McNall, a linebacker who did go to Northwestern. But late in the process, Sorensen had decommitted and went to Wisconsin and gets to play against his high school teammate today. Third downs, take a look at it. Northwestern's had it rolling. They don't get it here. Great penetration up front. That was Dan Moore who helped to blow that play up. That was big time. That was absolutely big time by Moore up front. Great penetration. Great surge, making backs, make cuts in the backfield. Those plays are infectious. See if Wisconsin can get another stop. Under a minute to go in this first half now. Wisconsin, one timeout left, three for Northwestern. They're going for it on fourth down and a yard at the 21-yard line of Wisconsin. And a timeout taken, Northwestern. Timeout, Northwestern. Their first. This Interesting call for Pat Fitzgerald here, going forward on fourth and one. Big Ten fans tell your loved ones overseas they won't miss the action. Fans around the globe can watch their favorite football teams this fall with Big Ten Ticket, the Big Ten Network's new international streaming package. Viewers living outside of the United States and Canada, go to www.bigtenticket.com to start watching today. And don't forget uh, our last telecast of the year coming up uh, in a couple of weeks from today down at Illinois, Fresno State. You see the leading rusher in the country in that ball game. This is an interesting call going forward and forth down here, but they decide now after the timeout Think it over for a moment, and now they're going to try to take the points. Stefan Demos coming on. I thought that was a bit of a curious call there. Yeah. Initially. They uh, took a timeout, thought it over. 38 yard field goal attempt for Demos. And he is right down the middle once again. So Northwestern cashes three on that particular drive and leads Wisconsin now 27 to 14, 34 seconds to go first half. Well, Wisconsin's had their nose bloodied by the Cats early. But this is a team with a lot of fight, a lot of skill sets on the perimeter, and that's 
what Coach Bielema, as you see him there, imploring his guys to get out and make plays. Well, we mentioned uh, Stefan Demos missed field goals last week. A couple of them to the left side, 47 and 50 yards. And he missed a 31-yarder wide right off the upright. Earlier today in practice, uh, pregame, he was struggling as well. But when the lights came on, <laughs> he's true. He's he's shining. A of field goals. Earlier today at practice, wide right and then this one my gosh I know what that feels like with a driver <laughs> squid kick picked up by the Badgers one of the up backs and the man who picked it up was Brady Ewing a running back so it was in good hands and he gets possession out across the 35 yard line. Man, you mentioned that that's you with a driver. That's me with any club in my bag. <laughs> 17 unanswered points by Northwestern has put the Badgers behind uh, the eight ball, so to speak, as we near halftime. Northwestern, I should say, Wisconsin would get the uh, choice to take the ball at the start of the second half. Tolzien looking for running room, nowhere to go. Corey Wooten would not be rooted out of there. <laughs> he makes the sack. Loss of seven. And this is all effort because he's he's just fighting. This play takes a while. Look how he just drives the right tackle all the way back, and he doesn't give up on the play. You know, when, when you looked at it, it was like, well, Tolzien was surrounded by white jerseys and one purple yeah. <laughs> jersey in the middle of it. He couldn't get out. First half comes to a close. What an impressive first half for the Northwestern Wildcats. Let's get down to Carissa. Well, you've kept this thing exciting, that's for sure. Six plays for over 20 yards. How have you been able to be so effective? Well, Mike's been really efficient. Mick's called a great game, and our attitude going into halftime, we just saw that clock said 0-0, zero, zero, and, you know, uh, it's time to go finish now, and that's what you want to do for your seniors is finish. A healthy Corey Wooten. How about your defensive effort? We're playing hard right now, but it's a 60-minute football game, and I know Brett's going to go in there and rattle their cage, and a wounded Badger is uh, something you don't want to deal with in a while, so we know what we got to go do. It's time to finish and uh, send our seniors out the right way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Carissa. The two coaches are very close. They uh, grew up in Illinois, played Big Ten football, and now are head coaches in the Big Ten. Bielaba and his counterpart, Pat Fitzgerald. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up next. Welcome back to Northwestern. We've got a track meet going here. 27-14 Northwestern over Wisconsin. Wayne Larravee, Chris Martin, Carissa Thompson with us on the sidelines. And it's been a busy first half of play. 248 yards through the air by Mike Kafka here well, today. Yeah, and Kafka's holding the clinic on how to run the spread offense. He's executing, comfortable in the pocket, reading and diagnosing the defense, and then spreading Wisconsin out so that they have to cover a lot of grass. He seems to be in rhythm with Brewer. You expect that again at senior day, a lot of emotion being fueled, and he's the engine that makes Northwestern offense go, and so far he's been doing his thing. No question about it. You're going to look at the numbers in that first half of play. Time of possession, very even so far. Now, remember, Wisconsin has dominated that category. They're number one of the Big Ten in time of possession. So if Northwestern gets a break even there, it bodes well for the Wildcats. Second half coming up, Wisconsin should receive when we come back. football presented by the United States Marine Corps along with Carissa Thompson and Chris Martin I'm Wayne Larravee great to have you with us this late November afternoon and uh, Carissa you had a chance to talk with coach uh, Fitz at halftime well I actually caught up with coach Bielema but I'll tell you what Wayne the temperature dropped about 10 degrees but it still isn't as cold as it probably was in that locker room for Wisconsin Brett Bielema telling me before the game he knew very well what Mike Kafka was able to do when healthy and he saw that in the first half I asked about the breakdown he said very simple short and sweet we got to be better on third down stops and stop giving up the big play he really didn't want to say much more than that but I'll tell you who also had a lot to say 
O'Brien Schofield, I saw him right before half get up in the face of his defense. Not too happy with their performance. We'll see how they respond. Indeed, Carissa. They gave up 292 yards of offense to Northwestern in that first half play. And Chris, let's revisit the Porsche keys to the game. Oh, we talked about Wisconsin having the big boy Northwestern up front, but when you look at John Clay, he's averaging only two yards a carry, and they got to attack. You know, play space invaders Northwestern running a clinic on how to attack the defense, and I think clearly you can see the emotional fuel behind Northwestern. Carissa did talk to Fitz at halftime too, but that was on the way into halftime. <laughs> Here's the kickoff to Gilreath at the three to the 10 cutting right to the 15. He's to the 20 25 30 got the corner to the 31 yard line. Chased out of bounds 29 yard return first down coming up for the Badgers. Tolzien was efficient in that first half of play seven of 10 108 yards and a touchdown. But uh, the Badgers didn't get as many plays maybe as they would like 30 plays they ran 20 times and got just 23 yards on the ground. Well I think they're going to try and mix in Nick Toon here early in this half. Slot at the top of your screen that's Toon in the slot Tolzien obviously looking that way and going for Toon. Good call partner Nick Toon inside the 45 yard line of Northwestern good start. To the second half for Wisconsin 26 yard play. Well you're going to see Nick Toon. He's just going to stretch and get to that second layer which is the hole in the defense right in front of the corner. Again he's a big body wide receiver. So he poses a nice target for Tolzien. Good exchange. Nice throw dropped it right in over the linebacker Quentin Davey. First and 10. Tolzien to the air again. Graham is open and he's out of bounds. Garrett Graham is one Badger who did factor big in that first half of play. He's out of bounds at the 30 14 yard gain. The beginning of the second half is presented by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And Wayne you can clearly see the fire that Coach Pielema lit under his troops because they've come out swinging in this second half. They've got the fullback in Turner and they go quickly to the wing. Toon gets one block from Anderson and he's going to get called for a hold. Isaac Anderson got tied up just a little bit too long with the defender. Toon out of bounds near the 20. This should wipe out a 10 yard gain on the hold. And that's where Anderson has just has to play smarter football. Nick Toon's going to make that guy miss coming off the perimeter. No reason to hook him there. Holding. Offense. Number six. Ten yard penalty. Repeat. First down. It's only the second penalty of the game against Wisconsin. There it is right there. Had his yeah, arm wrapped up around him a little bit. Sherrick McManus that he was holding. First down. First and 15. Football 35 yard line as I mentioned. Clean game so far. <laughs> I think I just jinxed us. <laughs> yeah. Jinx. <laughs> Easily how it works. Tolzien again to the air. Toon unable to make the play. And that was McManus who flashed in front and made one heck of a save, batting the ball away near the 10 yard line. When Flash is exactly right, watch his ability. He's working the middle. Now watch him drop. And that is just athleticism and skill set by McManus identifying tune and being able to close with the football and this kid has special DNA and when the ball's in the air he knows how to make a play on it. look at that interception right there took it right away from the fighting Illini receiver to seal the game at Illinois a week ago second down at 15 Tolzien and this is highly unusual that's tune out of bounds highly unusual to see Wisconsin come out for a second half this heavy in the passing game. Well I, I think that was part of the message that Wisconsin sending you know maybe they need to pass to set up the run game. Well that's what they did last week against Michigan exactly. and we saw that. And then that's Paul Chris making the adjustment. Nick Toon getting great separation and finishing against McManus. Yeah, Sheriff McManus fell down he slipped just a bit on that play and that was enough for Toon to disengage. Zach Brown is in the offensive backfield. 
Three receiver set tunes at the bottom of your screen. Toon makes the catch. Oh, he plucked it out of the air, beat Cherrick McManus on the post, and it's first down just outside the 10-yard line of Northwestern. 16-yard pass play to match the number on Tolzien's jersey. And it doesn't get any better than this one-on-one -on -one matchup, folks. You're going one of the better cornerbacks, if not the best cornerback in the Big Ten, and Nick Toon, one of the premier wide receivers. Good job of going up, plucking the football with his hands and moving the chain. Opening drive, second half. Wisconsin exclusively through the air thus far. Kendricks in motion. Tolzien again. Turned tune around. And the pass off the mark under the coverage of McManus once again. That's best on best, as you've been mentioning, Chris. Well, that's exactly what it is. And this kid continues to develop his skill set. Again, we talked about him in the red zone. I wouldn't be surprised if Paul Chris comes back to him. He's an apex catcher, so he'll go up and get the ball at the highest point. Sherrick McManus, the cornerbacks in Northwestern, giving him a lot of respect. Look at the space up top. Second and ten. Tolzien. End zone. Touchdown. There is a penalty marker down. Penalty marker thrown on the far side. Anderson on the reception. Well, you mentioned how Wisconsin good inside Illegal the motion. Zone. Number six. Moving forward at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. Anderson who caught the pass. See Anderson coming across in motion. It's a little zigzag motion. He's actually going to come back toward the middle. And he's he moving forward goes. before yeah. the snap. Yeah, this is uh, this isn't the CFL. They they don't allow you to do that. Second down. Second and 15. Tolzien, screen pass. Zach Brown could not keep his footing. Virtually no gain. And that time, Wisconsin trying to set up the screen. Tolzien does as he's taught. He holds it to the last minute, but yet puts it in a place that makes it tough for Zach Brown to keep running. Zach juggled it a bit, made a heck of a catch on it, but again, in college football, you don't need to be touched down by the defense. If you're down, it's over. Just two for seven today for Wisconsin. Third and 15. Lots of time. Late throw, wide of the mark, incomplete. Intended for Kyle Jefferson. Field goal unit comes on. Well, give props to Wisconsin's offensive line because Tolzien had all the time he wanted. Couldn't connect. Looking for Jefferson. Good blocking up front. He's got to be able to give his wide receiver a chance. 35-yard field goal attempt for Philip Welch. 13 of 19 overall. He got it to the uprights, and it is good. Wisconsin goes exclusively to the air. Who said Badgers don't fly? <laughs> Ten-point game. Welcome back to Northwestern. Beautiful late November afternoon. I should say late afternoon in mid-November is what I'm trying to say. There's the scoring drive. Now, how unusual is this? All passing plays on that drive for the Badgers. Sometimes you have to be unpredictable. No one would have predicted that in their right mind. Jacob Schmidt coming out of there. To the 10, to the 15, 20. The Wisconsin native from Rhinelander across the 30-yard line as a penalty marker flies late. David Gilbert got him to the ground. I think there'll be some malfeasance on the part of Northwestern here. Malfeasance, huh? <laughs> That's a Northwestern <laughs> word, partner. I thought I'd bring it out for you. Wow. <laughs> Illegal block below the waist. Receiving team. 27, 25. Half the distance to the ball. 
first down. I was here on Wednesday. You didn't know I stopped at the library, did some research here. <laughs> Apparently. Tried to expand my vocabulary to fit in around here. <laughs> There's a look at it. So, off the penalty, Northwestern starts deep in their own territory. And Pat Fitzgerald, uh, my guess is he doesn't agree with the call. <laughs> Faces matching oh. the crowd back there. He's, he's <laughs> just a little bit pretty red. So, this is the worst field position for Northwestern to start a drive today. Mike Kafka. Has cranked it up pretty well. RB Fields in the offensive backfield to give to Fields. Breaks a tackle. Trying to get the corner. Out across the 10 yard line of the 15. It's going to be a face mask penalty. Might be on McFadden, the linebacker who trailed him on the play. Eight yard gain. Defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. And you see it at the tail end of this run. There it is. RB Fields doing a nice job of running harder for a young back, running with toughness. We know that play, I mean, eight yard gain, 15 yards added to it. All of a sudden, Northwestern's out of the hole. Mm -hmm. First down for the Wildcats at their 29. <laughs> Kafka, Brewer wide open under the coverage. Of Niles Brinkley. Let's get back to the studio. Dave Revson in Crestone Game Break. Wow. Loading it on again. Second year in a row they kind of loaded up on the Hoosiers. Kafka just completed a, a pass for no gain, virtually no gain, to RB Fields. And it's second and ten for Northwestern. Ooh, a little bit less than ten, let's say, second and nine. And again, Northwestern with that. Getting the play at the line of scrimmage. Fields trying to bounce to the outside. Able to slip through the tackle attempt of Watt, who was held, it appeared. Big Ten college football brought to you in high definition by Phillips HD. Available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. Holding the call on Al Netter. I don't believe the man who made the tackle, J.J. Watt, was the man who was held. And again, Wisconsin's DNs do a nice job of getting up the field. They have quick first steps and they anticipate the snap count well. So that's why you're seeing the offensive linemen of Northwestern struggle to block them one on one. The senior Mike Kafka number one in completion percentage in the Big Ten Conference just under 66 percent. Quick look into Ebert and he drove a pair of Badgers on the stop McFadden and Comer St. Jean a gain of yardage out to the 35 gain of about three or four. And you say if you're Northwestern you're saying well why do they throw these little two and three yard routes particularly when you're behind the chains but that's a part of their system. It's how it works. They take those four yard pops for Northwestern. It's like a run play. Exactly. It just replaces a running play. Third down. Third and long for Northwestern. Four of seven on third downs. They've converted a couple of long ones. Kafka. Penalty mark. down. He throws it away. Penalty marker down in the area of holding. They were working against Chris Borland, athletic linebacker for Wisconsin. I think he was the one that was getting held. Holding 64. Offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Doug Bartle is the guilty party in. Uh, it's the second time today that a holding penalty on third down has been turned down by Wisconsin to get the ball back on fourth down. Stefan Demos on a punt formation. Last in the Big Ten in yards per punt. It's a high snap. 
Well, watch Gilreath. End over end kick. Gilreath from the 33 to the 35, 40. 45 to the 50. Gilreath to the 40. Cuts it back. He's gone. 20, 10, 5 to the house. Touchdown. 67 yards. And that boy good. David Gilreath, one of the most electrifying players in the country. You know that in the return game. He can pop the top off. He has that type of quickness. Now watch this. Sets up the blocks. Now it's feel, it's burst, it's explosion, and it's goodbye to the house. Big play for Wisconsin. The extra point try is good. Right down the boulevard by Philip Welch. Special teams engineered by the head coach. Special teams proving special. Wisconsin gets right back in it. See that little object right there? It's, uh, my dad used to call that a uh, toenail move. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Tip of a toenail. <laughs> Beautiful night here. Now in uh, Evanston, 8.16 left to go. <laughs> We've got a good one. Here come the Wildcats. Simmons to the 20. 25-30. 35 40 and out of bounds boy he has been a weapon on kick returns today and he's changing the field position for northwestern allowing the offense to start off in favorable space now watch gilreath he's one of those phone booth guys he can make you miss inside a phone booth watch the blocking up front freezer right there guy here guy right here and nothing but wisconsin guys so that's a great sign. And then watch how he makes the unaccounted for guy miss in the open field. Excellent design. Better play by Gilly. Four returns, 155 yards in return yardage for Simmons. 34 yards on that return. And we've got a whistle to stop the action. A timeout Time called by Wisconsin. Wisconsin. They're first. We saw them take an unscheduled timeout in the first mm -hmm. half as well. So they may not have been... Uh, Happy with the personnel they had on the field for what Northwestern was offering. This is a this is a load for Wisconsin uh, the defending this Northwestern team of this particular spread. So much different than what Michigan presented, which was more of a downfield passing game. Michigan, you didn't have to cover as much field. You've got to cover a lot more width against this uh, spread passing attack. Yeah, it forces you in that horizontal pass game. But Northwestern has taken their shots down the field as well. Don't forget, in two weeks, we wrap up the Big Ten football season with an exciting non-conference matchup. Illinois looks to end their season on a high note when they host Fresno State. Coverage in HD, Saturday, December 5th, only on the Big Ten Network. And we will see the leading rusher in the nation, Ryan Matthews of Fresno State. that 149 yards a game. Well, we've got a top rusher in the Big Ten in this game who's been basically neutralized. John Clay came in averaging five yards a pop, and he has not been able to get up much of a lather in this one. First down near the 42, Kafka. Boy, he is on, and Simmons, the catch, he gave it up, but uh, it was recovered by Dunsmore. Sidney Stewart, I beg your pardon, on the reception, and Dunsmore gathered it in off the fumble. Second down. Again, up tempo pace. Straight ahead move. Right at the defense, just to kind of keep him honest and get close to that first down. That was Fields. And what's interesting in watching Northwestern is that Mike Kafka, it's almost automatic when he's making these throws. Right? He's hitting spots in the defense. That's a sign of his football intelligence and his command of the offense. Short yardage play. Penalty markers are down. I think somebody jumped the, the line, didn't they? Ball start, 89. Offense, five-yard penalty remains third down. Josh Rooks just changed the play call there. <laughs> yeah. That one. Now it is third down and a little bit more than five. And for Wisconsin, this is when you have to rally your defense and say, get off the field. Somebody step up and make a play. 
You know Northwestern loves those second level throws. So you have to watch the middle of the field. Northwestern going back to the bunch formation up top. Third down Northwestern. Kafka over the middle Brewer and he's got the first down into Badger territory to the 47 yard line make it the 46 first and 10 eight yard gain Northwestern would like to run 80 plus plays offensively a game they average just over 77 today's Bass Pro Shops catch of the day and what a catch it was Brewer the former quarterback lays out for that throw from Kafka for the touchdown yeah he hooked it first down Kafka hit as he throws and it's nearly intercepted by Javery McFadden beg your pardon Comer St. Jean almost picked that away now get a look at the quarterback he was hit by Schofield that time as he let it go yeah Schofield putting Kafka under duress and Colmer St. Jean doing a nice job of reading the eyes of Kafka as it will always take you to the ball. Second down and 10. Kafka flushed. Gets it away. Brewer, the reception just short of the first down under the coverage of Devin Smith. And now they're going to move the chains. Got a generous spot. It looks like it's going to be a first down. Indeed it is. Northwestern once again faking the die play. Brewer just getting to the sticks. And you know who brings the heat off the edge. O'Brien Schofield, one of the sack masters of the Big Ten. Schofield gets a break here. And he is from Chicago, so you know has a lot of family members here. This game means a lot to him. Everybody out for a pass. Kafka going over the top down the sidelines. Well covered. Pass intended for Mitchell, the tight end. Jay Valai had the coverage for Wisconsin. Well covered and a great read by Valai. They try and sneak, sneak out this little wheel route. Watch him read, read up the tight end, force him to the sideline. That's a textbook. Yeah, absolutely. By the safety of Wisconsin. Good read, good instincts. Jay Bly known as a hitter, not as a pass coverage type guy, safety, but he covered like a glove there. Second down and 10. Sideline pattern Ebert out of bounds under the coverage of Devin Smith, 31 yard line of Wisconsin. It's a gain of five, and it'll be third and five coming up. And this is where, when you're Wisconsin's defense, it can be a little bit frustrating. Northwestern wants to sort of dink and dunk you with those underneath cuts. Sometimes that gets you boiling for defense. Well, it becomes an endurance factor, you know, for the defense, rushing the quarterback, covering downfield. Third down and about five. Kafka takes it himself and is brought down short. Tackle made by Wisconsin linebacker Blake Sorensen. Today's Verizon wireless connection is the aforementioned Andrew Brewer. Six receptions, 102 yards, and two touchdowns here today. They are late in getting the holder onto the field, but have plenty of time to go on the play clock. Markshausen is in the hold on a 45-yard field goal for Stefan Demos. Demos is three for three. Northwestern up to 30 points. It is a six point lead with 420 to go. Third quarter in Evanston for the Wildcats. Seymour, we're going to have to get your uh, toenail file out there. <laughs> Smooth out that moon a little bit. That'll there. be a big file. Musco Sports Lighting, proud to support the Big Ten. Musco makes sports lighting happen around the globe from NASCAR to Olympics to college athletics and hometown ball fields. Find out more at musco.com. Each team a field goal here in the third quarter. Gilreath coming back the other way. 
He took one back all the way in this third quarter. On a punt return to get the Badgers back into it. Jared Carpenter makes the tackle. Talked about the plays per game. Northwestern leads the Big Ten in this category. Houston, how about that? Almost 84 plays a game. That's holy it's unreal. Cow. Talking to uh, Nick McCall, they want to. They'd like to get about 80 snaps if they could offensively. That's a lot. First and ten, Tolzien. Tune near the 40-yard line. Storm back. They're going to give him a first down at the 40. Let's get back to the uh, studio. Dave Rebson, Prestone game break. Dave. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, Matt Suey's son. Matt, yep. of course, was the blocking back for the great Walter Payton on the 85 Bears. First down to the 39-yard line. Big hole, John Clay. Still on his feet and out of bounds. <laughs> Biggest run of the day. Nate Williams hammered him out. But not before John Clay gets Wisconsin into enemy territory. And they just woke a sleeping giant. John Clay, you don't need to give this guy the smallest of holes, let alone the massive one that he just went through. When the first contact is in the secondary, that is not good if you're Northwestern. 20-yard run, first down to the 41 of Northwestern. 51 yards rushing now for Clay. Tolzien. And it's juggled and dropped. Incomplete by Kyle Jefferson. That run on the previous play by Clay, if I'm not mistaken, is the first running play for Northwestern in this third, or for Wisconsin in this third quarter. Yeah. But what we're seeing today are two of the best passers in the Big Ten Conference, Tolzien and, Com and Kafka. Great understanding of the offenses, knowing where to attack defenses, and then having the arm strength and accuracy to deliver on Tol point. Tolzien beat out Kurt Phillips, a redshirt freshman, and Dustin Scher, an upperclassman, for the quarterback job this fall at Wisconsin. Oh, nearly intercepted by Brad Phillips. Oh, my goodness. He would have taken that to the house. Would have been pick six. Well, sometimes you can go to the well one too many times. And, they, and he's seen this route today, the out cut by Nick Toon. He's a box safety, so he's already close to the action. That time, nice job of driving it. Boy. Now, when you talk box safety, what are you talking about? He's close to the line of scrimmage, so they're playing him like a linebacker. He's 6'4", just about 230 pounds, so you want him up in the fray. Wisconsin, 2 of 8 on third downs. Tolzien takes it himself. Inside the 35, cut down short of the first down. Quinton Davey got him to the ground. Good feel by Tolzien. Nothing's there, so take what the defense gives you. Use the ump as a pick if you have to. <laughs> he got the middle linebacker, Nate Williams, out of the picture, didn't it? He sure did. <laughs> Fourth down. And it looks like the Badgers going to go for it. They trail by six. Final two and a half minutes, third quarter. Play action to Clay. Tolzien hit and set. First it was Brown and then it was Wooten. And the ball goes over to Northwestern at the Wildcat 38. And Wayne, sometimes you can outsmart yourself. Paul Chris, offensive coordinator, choosing to go with play action when you have a 250 pound back in John Clay. On your squad, leading rusher in the Big Ten, I'm taking my chances and putting the rock in his hand. Northwestern came in sixth in the conference in sacks. Penalty markers all over the play. Todd Gearlings has the call. Ball start. Multiple offensive players. Five-yard penalty remains first down. 
Don't forget to stick around after the game. Complete analysis with the State Farm wrap up. Get in depth highlights from the entire conference. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Glenn immediately after the game only on the Big Ten Network. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Carissa Thompson under the lights now here at Northwestern. First and 15. Stephen Simmons into a crowd, and he's not going to come out of the other end of this one. Comer St. Jean was there, along with Blake Sorensen and Jay Valai. Job of sealing off the crease by Wisconsin. Big guys up front. You know, Northwestern's been moving at a quick tempo the whole game. Both of these teams came in playing their best football of the season. Wisconsin had that two game losing streak at Ohio State and at home to Iowa in the middle of the campaign but they've been on fire since Northwestern's won five of its last seven Kafka's got a man out there Sidney Stewart down to the 15 yard line Yard pass play to Stewart. Biggest reception of his season. Well, they're working once again on Devin Smith up top. And unfortunately, today he's been a part of the hospital burn unit because they have been attacking him down the field with their wide receivers. He's squatting on routes and allowing receivers to get behind him. A minute to go, third quarter. Simmons straight at the defense again one of those just keep them honest type of plays gain of barely a yard and it'll be second down for Northwestern Mike Kafka really picking this defense apart he's had a couple of drop passes in those 10 misses well, he had 200 yards in the first half and Northwestern in this game unlike most they're throwing the ball down the field a lot more than they usually do so they must have identi identified some personnel things in this Wisconsin defense halftime adjustments make a difference second down Kafka under pressure hit from behind and then twisted down McFadden the outside linebacker got there first it's a loss of a couple of yards and will leave a third down coming up as the quarter comes to a close. End of three in Evanston. Pat Fitzgerald, Kafka, and the Cats by six. Football presented by the United States Marine Corps. Third and 11 as we begin the fourth quarter for Northwestern. Kafka with the pump fake over the top to the end zone. Incomplete, well covered. Stewart, the intended receiver, and Devin Smith, who's been getting a workout in this second half, had great coverage that time. Yeah, that time the workout worked in his favor. Take a look at the score by quarters. The fact that Northwestern outscored Wisconsin in the second quarter. Wisconsin owns a huge advantage over its opponents in the second quarter for some reason, but the Wildcats on the lead. This will be a 34 yard field goal attempt off the right hash mark for Stefan Demos, who's been true on three field goal attempts already today. And another just inside the right upright. Opening 10 seconds, fourth quarter. The Wildcat lead is 33 24. Well, when we talked to Coach Bielema about what this team has to, how do, how do they win against Northwestern? He said, Northwestern, they, they forced you to play a clean game. So you have to be able to convert on third downs. So far, Wisconsin, two of nine. You got to continue to follow that. Time for the Jack Link's beef jerky wild fan cam. <laughs> <laughs> A little south of the border flavor there. <laughs> Who's your buddy? Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Six plays, 45 yards on the 
drive for Northwestern. 34 yard field goal fourth field goal of the game for Stefan Demos so as rough as it was for him last week at Illinois he quietly has been uh, one of the subtle keys to keeping the Wildcats on top in this one today. Another squib type kick juggled and taken by Chris Borland to the 30 35 40. Why don't they put him even deeper. <laughs> he ought to return a few more <laughs> out across the 45. Chris Borland folks is one of our favorite players a true freshman. He is just a delight to watch play and to be around freshman out of Kettering Ohio 26 yards on that return. He does a little bit of everything. He stepped in for Mike Taylor at that strong side linebacker spot and has played it well this season. And there are some guys that are just football players through and through from their eyelashes to their toenails. That kid is certainly one of them. Take a look at the rushing team. Day through three quarters, just 23 running attempts by Wisconsin. That's the stunning statistic. Clay gets the call back to the line of scrimmage. Penn State, Michigan State doing battle. Dave Rebson in our Big Ten Network studio, a press tone game break. Oh, Wayne, this has turned into a blowout. Penn State all over Michigan State. Daryl Clark here to Graham Zug, 32 yards. They just hooked up again for another one. It's 35 7 now. Indy Lions. Well, is there any doubt who the two best teams of the Big Ten are? Didn't see that coming. Not Michigan State. That's at East up. Lansing, yeah. Tolzine. Gilreath under the coverage makes the reception. He's about two yards short of the first down. Jordan may have been the cornerback, quick to the ball. Eight yard gain. Now you look at you know again Ohio State. How can you argue with that? You know uh, they're probably the best team and. You could argue in Penn State or Iowa as the second best team when Iowa beat Penn State earlier this year. So well and I think the theme is the teams that are the best teams are the ones that can do two things run the football in the month of November and stop the run. Third down and two Kendricks in motion Tolzine got a block from Clay and he hits Gilraith my goodness. How did Phillips not pick that off. Phillips coming over the top Brad Phillips had a great angle made a great break on the ball but that pass got there just in time to Gilbert for a first down gain of nine. Yeah and Tolzien put just enough juice behind this throw to get it there. That's a tight window. Excellent play. You see Gilbert just working at the top of your screen he settles down. Wow. First and ten. Plenty of time. Tolzine over the middle takes a check down. John Clay, not a bad option. Nate Williams got there to make the hit. First down for Wisconsin, 11 yard gain. And Clay showing some versatility, not just a bruising back, can get out and make catches in space. You have to like what Wisconsin's doing, methodically moving down the field. And take a look at the receivers. Working you know, for their quarterback. There aren't many guys this side of Brett Favre who would even throw that ball yeah. in that situation. A lot of confidence. Play. First throw inside the 20, and here come the Badgers. Eight yard gain down to the 18 yard line. And you know when you see Big 32 coming at you and you're in the hole one on one, that is just a low to take on. Look at him when he gets a shoulder square. The only thing that you can do is tackle him very low. Take a look at this number. We were shocked to find this since 2005 and 9 in conference road games in the month of November for the Badgers. Now this one's far from over. First down yardage. John Clay gets upended. I believe that was Phillips who got a piece of him. Four yard gain to a first down. The lead is nine for Northwestern. We're in the opening four minutes of this fourth quarter. And John Clay just now starting to get it cranked up. 62 yards, 17 carries. But regardless of how many yards they end up with on the ground, you can remember one thing about Wisconsin. If they open the run, they did it with the pass. Yeah, they nice. open the defense with the pass to start the run. From the outside, ball is brought down by Nate Williams. Outstanding defensive play by the middle linebacker. With virtually no gain. And some guys just have 
a knack for sorting through the trash on the field and getting to the ball. And that's exactly what Williams did there. And, and usually those are the guys, see, Mark, you put at middle linebacker. Because they're in a lot of trash. Mm -hmm. and, and they have <laughs> the instincts. Second and ten. Tolzien. Got a man wide open. Touchdown. Garrett Graham. Garrett Graham once again. His second touchdown of the game. A 13 yard pass play. And when you're playing against the best pass catching tight end in the conference. He should never be all alone. Great play call in design to pop him free. Way to close the deal by Garrett Grant. I'll tell you what, Paul Christ has got to be having the time of his life, the offensive coordinator for Wisconsin. The extra point is up and good by Philip Welch. You talk about creative play design, having to go in a different direction. Garrett Graham's second touchdown of the game, seventh of the season. The Badger giving the biceps a little bit of a workout here. <laughs> Wisconsin up over 30 now. It's 33-31 Northwestern. And watch Garrett Graham freeze it right there. You're going to see the linebacker pass him off. Here's the kickoff deep into the end zone. And uh, Jacob Schmidt downs it. Northwestern will accept to the 20-yard line. Wayne, let's go back to it here. Watch Garrett Graham. And if we can freeze it right there, linebacker here passes him off. He doesn't reroute the tight end which is why he's able to hit that corner route and get to the end zone. The problem was not in passing him off, which is what he does in a zone. It was in not rerouting him. Right. right. Allowing him to clean release up the field right. puts a lot of pressure on the safety. Here's the game summary. Wisconsin beginning to crank it up now. They've scored in two of their last three possessions. They just went eight plays and 54 yards. So Northwestern responds. And on senior day, it is a freshman who gets the call on first and ten in this particular series. And he's got close to ten yards. R.B. Fields. Fields getting a lot of burn in tonight's action. Well, you know, the last time these two teams played here, and I understand it was a while ago, but they put together, what, a, over 1,100 yards of offense and 99 points. <laughs> <laughs> This is no surprise to anybody who follows this series, and it's become a great series. Northwestern and Wisconsin, they've split their last 10 games. Fields in traffic. Today's Verizon Wireless Big Ten poll question, which kicker is the most reliable in clutch situations? Text your vote to 20284. Vote one for Brett Swenson of Michigan State. Two for Stefan Demos of Northwestern. Three for Carson Wiggs of Purdue. Penalty marker down. As uh, eight nine offense. Five yard penalty remains down. It's a third time on third and short. Northwestern's been called for a false start in this game. We'll announce uh, the results right after the game during the wrap-up. Demos coming in. I, I would not have yeah. voted for him before today, but uh, today I'd probably vote right. for him. Off of the tape last week, you have to wonder, but he's performed today. Much more of a factor are penalties in the second half, especially against Northwestern. So third down. Kafka takes it himself. First down to the 35 out of bounds, 38 yard line in front of the Northwestern bench. Once again, that's the key to this particular spread offense. A quarterback doesn't have to run 10, 20 times a game. He has to threaten you with the run. Yeah, Wayne, but the other key is that you have a healthy hamstring. Yep. Clearly, Kafka able to show linear speed and get to the sticks. 14-yard gain. First down, football just across the 38-yard line of Northwestern. The Wildcats leading by a tenuous two points. It has been a great game here. Play action to Fields. Kafka shakes off one would-be tackler. 
and able to get out of bounds of the 40, gain of about two yards. I'll tell you what, Patrick Buttram had him dead to rights, it seemed like. He did. Now, he's a big kid, Kafka, 6'3", 220 pounds, so you have to bring it to get him on the ground. He is athletic and elusive. Good job of avoiding the set. Second and eight. Inside of nine minutes to go for the game. Big day for Kafka. Blitz. Quick toss fields in the flat. Stays on his feet, got an extra yard. To the 44, on a gain of four. Jay Valai, the safety got over there to clear him out of bounds in front of the Wildcat bench. That's good pursuit to the football, though, by Wisconsin. Northwestern again out in space. They said Wisconsin has to play space invaders. Now it's a little more unmanageable in terms of the distance here. But Northwestern has done well on third down. Zeke Markshausen's been silent as a receiver, but he has thrown a touchdown pass. He's at the top of your screen in the slot. Kafta's going the other way. Broken up nicely. Devin Smith made a nice break on that pass to Tedder Brewer, who wanted pass interference but did not get the call. Wisconsin's defense is held. And this is how you can tell a cornerback who has confidence and a short memory. Because Smith has been targeted earlier today, but still the confidence to go and drive on that ball. That was an exceptional play out on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Demos in punt formation. Gil Reith back deep. High snap Demos. Does the rugby punt. Down the hash mark. And here comes Gil Reith. Not going anywhere this time. Excellent coverage by Northwestern, in particular, Jerevan Matthews. Down the stretch we come in a tight one. That's the Wildcat version of jump around, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just a guess. Tolzine, 18 to 26, 229 yards, two touchdowns. First and 10, Wisconsin. Big John Clay sifting through the garbage. Out across the 25 on a gain of about six to the sidelines. Carissa, what's the atmosphere like down there? Well, having spent both times, uh, both amount of time on both sidelines, I'm noticing Wisconsin's been quiet all game long, you guys. O'Brien Schofield is the only one that's been chatting it up. They almost look emotionally drained, whereas Northwestern has kept an energy throughout the game, even when they get behind. They are constantly talking, constantly upbeat. Wisconsin definitely has more of the advantage when they're at home at Camp Randall, that's for sure. Play cut down short of the 30. Thank you, Carissa. Gain of two, leaving a third down and two coming up. I'll tell you what, the Wildcats have played the run very well here today, and Adam Hahn, who made that tackle, has to come out of the ball game number 79. Looks like he may have dinged up his shoulder a little bit. Well, you get the feeling that this is sort of the precipice. Wisconsin third and short. Northwestern trying to get the crowd up. Wisconsin came in 48% on third downs. They are third, three of 10. See what Coach Hankowitz has conjured up for defense. They go wide. Play, first down and more. It takes him a while to get to top speed, but when he does, he can turn the corner on you. 15-yard run, first down, Wisconsin, just short of the Badger. 45-yard line. And the one thing about John Clay, when you watch him, he's a one-cut back. You're going to see one cut right there, and then he gets downhill. And as we said, he has got the wheels greased up, and he's putting some damage in on the Cats. Brad Phillips, the safety, made the hit. Inverted wishbone. Two backs in front of the tailback here. And this tailback is Bonte Ball. Straight ahead at the defense. Corey Wooten got over to make the hit. Pickup of about four. Hey, Big Ten fans, now you can get free programming alerts on your mobile phone. Be the first to know when your favorite coaches and players will appear on the Big Ten Network. Just text alerts to 20284 or log on to BigTenNetwork.com slash alerts. Message and data rates may apply. Second down. Tolzien into the flat tune, cuts it back, cannot get away. 
Well played that time by the linebacker Quentin Davy, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Number 41. What a job he did on the fleet, Nick Toon. Yeah, and it's just a quick hitter by Wisconsin. Quick screen, good close by Davy. Finding the football and flowing with speed. Third and seven. Football just short of the 47 of Wisconsin. Northwestern all out blitz. Tolzien's got time. Trying to get it to Toon. Pass thrown out of bounds. I think he expected Toon to run the sideline pattern. Nick cut inside and the pass off the mark. 100%. He thought that Toon was going to break on a corner route. Toon then drove the post. So miscommunication, which equals the three down and out. And again, yeah. they were they were trying to hit McManus on a corner out. Yeah, they were, and, and that was an all-out blitz. McManus was out there all alone on the island. Nortman's punt. Fair catch signal made, and the catch completed at the 15. Northwestern on offense when we come back. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Carissa Thompson, Pat Fitzgerald's team hanging on, leading by two. They've led in the second half of every one of their games this season. Kafka, comeback screen, Markshausen to the 30, making the 20 yard line out near the 23. Maragos on the tackle with Falai. Zeke Markshausen gets up a little gimpy. He had sandwiched it toward the end of this play. Mm. Maragos had him and then Valai over the top of it. And by numbers, Markshausen's been the most productive receiver for the Wildcats on the season. How about this? Up to 430. Second down. Kafka. Undershot his intended receiver, Jeremy Ebert, who was unable to come back to make the catch. That time, Nuker, uh, Dan Moore was in the uh, backfield, forcing the action, and that leaves a third down for Northwestern. The Wisconsin guys starting to feel it. Get their fans into it. Northwestern, 6 of 12. Break even on third downs. There's Kafka's day through the air. Third and two. Rooks the tight end in motion. Kafka rolling. Able to get it away and it's incomplete. Ebert the intended receiver. What a break on the ball by Niles Brinkley. And Niles Brinkley creates a collision here. Exactly what you want to do to dislodge the football and get his defense off the field. All right, now it's about field position, partner. Gilreath back deep. He's taken one to the house already today. First three and out for Northwestern in this half, but in the last two Northwestern possessions, the Wisconsin defense has held here in the fourth quarter. Demos gets it away, kind of a line drive kick, and a fair catch signal was made, and the catch completed by Gilreath. There is a penalty marker down. Out across the 40 yard line. Holding number seven receiving team 10 yard penalty first down. So they'll start back at the 34 yard line instead of the 44. Today's Land Rover extraordinary defensive player of the game. He's been all over everywhere uh, this entire game, all day, in daylight and at night. Brad Phillips working overtime, our Land Rover defensive player of the game. Safety for Northwestern. Yeah, and you want to see your seniors play their best football at the end of the season. Brad Phillips demonstrating that tonight. Wisconsin down two, 3.43 to go, two timeouts remaining. Tolzien, Graham to the 41-yard line, gain of seven. McNall, the linebacker, had the stop. 
And this is where you got to watch Scott Tolzien, because like David Copperfield, he can make magic, <laughs> especially when you give him time. He can read and diagnose the defense. He knows where the holes are. So you better look up Nick Toon, and you better look up Garrett Grant. Second down. Play the lone setback. Tolzien downfield to Toon, and the pass incomplete. McManus had the coverage near the 40 yard line of Northwestern in front of the Wisconsin bench. And McManus was in front of Nick Toon, which is why they kind of wanted that back shoulder fade. But instead, it was an errant throw. Keep your eye on that matchup. See if Paul Christ, offensive coordinator of Wisconsin, goes back that way. We've only seen flashes of the ground game for Wisconsin here today. Zach Brown is the lone setback. There's a look at the third down today. Just 4 of 12. Northwestern ISO and Nick Toon. Tolzien tried to thread the needle. Broke it up incomplete. Garrett Graham and a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down. Well, we mentioned earlier how active. Pass interference. Number 10. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. Brian Peters, the sophomore. We mentioned how active Garrett Graham is, particularly in the pass game of Wisconsin. Tight play on the ball. That was Phillips. That was. See, Brian Peters is number 10. He was accused, but it was really Phillips the pass interference. Exactly. First and 10. Big John Clay. Out across the midfield marker to the 49 yard line of Northwestern gain of six and talking to Pat Fitzgerald yesterday he said he's been telling his team all week play the 60 play for 60 minutes that's never more evident than right now and there's two and a half left in the game. Brett Bielema looks on anxiously. Second down for Wisconsin. Play crashing off the left side again. Close to the first down to the 46. Remember, all the Badgers need is a field goal to take the lead. We're nearing the two minute mark. Northwestern has three timeouts left. Wisconsin has two. You get the feeling they may just want to hunker down with this ground game here if they pick up this first down. 250 pound load in the backfield. No power. Here he comes. Fumble. He fumbled it. And it's recovered by Peters. Sometimes even big Tonka trucks can get a flat tire. And you'll see it going through the traffic. You know when you're under construction, you have to protect the ball with two arms. Ball dislodge is clearly there. Peters, nice job of securing the fumble. He had some fumble problems early in the season. They made him carry a football around campus. He had been uh, very good in recent weeks, but gives up the ball in a key situation there. And the wrongly accused two plays ago, Brian Peters wrongly accused of pass interference. <laughs> two plays later, he's the Give hero. Give some love. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. The twists and turns of a college football game. John Clay may be bringing that ball back into the classroom this upcoming week. There, the play is under review. I think they just want to make sure that Clay was not down before he fumbled the ball. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. There was a fumble recovered by Northwestern. First down, Northwestern. Two-point ball game, minute 44 to go. And if you're Wisconsin and that guy, Coach Bielema, you're saying, defense, somebody has to step up, be bigger than the moment, and make a play. 
Wisconsin eight and two five and two in the Big Ten 16th ranked team in the BCS standings. Northwestern trying for its eighth win of the season. RB Fields change of direction gets out across the 45 to the 47 gain of six. We take another look at the Hampton Hotel's touchdown of the game back in the first half. This diving grab of the second quarter by Andrew Brewer gave Northwestern the lead. And what a pretty play that was. Seems like a long time ago and a lot of scoring ago. <laughs> timeout taken by Wisconsin. They have one timeout remaining. A minute 39 with which to work. First turnover of the game for Wisconsin. And that might cost them. Meanwhile, Northwestern Seamart is trying to put together a 17 win two year record. Two years of regular season football to be the third best in school history over a two year period. Don't forget, State Farm wrap up scores, highlights, and analysis of today's games coming up. Northwestern again, the first back to back winning season since Pat Fitzgerald was wearing number 51. Second down. Fields trying to spin away, cannot. O'Brien Schofield decks him for a loss of two. The Phillips HD player of the game is that man right there, Mike Kafka. What a job. Senior day, his final home game here at Northwestern. And with good reason. We talked about him holding a spread clinic. He has worked every piece of grass it feels like on this field spacing out Wisconsin's defense and being masterful in the execution. Final time taken by Brett Bielema and company for they came in so hot playing extremely well hadn't lost since October 17th. We welcome all of you who've been watching Indiana and Purdue in the battle for the old oaken bucket. Welcome to Northwestern, where with a minute 35 to go, the homestanding Wildcats lead 16th ranked Wisconsin by just two. And coming up a third down for Northwestern. Wisconsin is out of timeouts. Philip Welch, 35 yard field goal. Gil Reith got Wisconsin back into the game. 68 yard return, punt return for a touchdown in the third quarter. And it's been nip and tuck ever since. Kafka. Tracked down by Javery McFadden. Well done, Kafka. Sacked for a loss of about three. And it's fourth down, so Wisconsin will get one more crack at it. And that's a great defensive stop by the bat. There's McFadden that time sniffing out the play by Kafka and getting him on the ground. Now allows Wisconsin and Gilreath to have another bite at the apple. Wisconsin have come in on a three game winning streak with an eight and two record. They have one more game remaining. They'll play at Hawaii on December 5th. Northwestern. Had come in having won five of their last seven games after a two and two start. And Purdue able to knock off Indiana once again, 38 21 the final there. So the bucket stays in <laughs> West Lafayette for another year. You know, while we have this stop of the action, this is one of our last games of the year. We certainly want to thank the uh, tremendous people in our crew, Jim Ressler, our producer, and uh, the leader of our troop, our director, Dennis Lanius, the uh, rush chairman of our group, technical manager, Tim Denius, technical director, Lindsey Greshel, associate director, Billy Proctor, associate producer, Jeff Nelson, and the camera crew, Mike Weir, Mark Stillman, Greg Baker, videotape, Pat Collar, and Rick Ruman. Boy, they've been busy this afternoon. Audio, Jason Lynch and Rocky Slasky. Video, Brian Neer. Graphics, Julie Wark and John Gluba. Travis Solzness, our mobile unit engineer. Tom Heckner, Hecker, our statistician. Travis Solzner, our mobile unit engineer. Confirmation time, Demos. 
I don't think he wants to give Gilreath a chance to return this one. He does not. Sends it out of bounds in the vicinity of the 20 yard line. They're going to mark it right there at the 20. So Wisconsin, probably about what you think, 60 yards, 55 yards away from field goal possibility. Yeah. We'd like to thank the media relations directors and their staffs for their help this week. Two of the best in the business, Brian Lucas from Wisconsin and Mike Wolf here at Northwestern. Obviously pass situation. If I'm Northwestern, I'm watching two guys in particular. Number 89, Garrett Graham. Number one, Nick Toon. No timeouts. Football to the 20, first and 10. Scott Tolzien. Rolling Meadows, Illinois. Looking deep. Needs a big play. And it is intercepted. Pass to Jennifer Anderson. Intercepted by Jordan Maben. An exceptional play by Maben. Knowing that this is obvious vertical passing. Opportunities and situation. And he may have just sealed the deal for the Wildcats, the 21 seniors on senior day. See Coach Hankwitz. Victory formation for Northwestern. Time melting away. The home team wins in this series once again. Nine times. The home team has won of the last nine games in this series. <laughs> Kafka seeking out O'Brien Schofield, who was seeking Kafka all day. Yeah, he was. <laughs> what a ball game. The emotion of Seniors Day. Two good football teams coming in here playing their best football of the season and they put on quite a show. Oh, they most certainly did. And as you can see from the picture there, what a Kodak moment for Northwestern, their seniors, their fans, and for the Wildcat family. 33-21, a 33-31. Northwestern has defeated Wisconsin. The final home game of the season for the Wildcats. Well, I'll tell you something. Pat Fitzgerald has this team poised for a pretty good reward in the Bulls situation. They finished eight and four in the regular season, five and three in Big Ten play. Wisconsin now eight and three, five and three in conference play as well. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the bowl picture. Yeah. Interesting to see how it plays out. Northwestern again showing resilience fighting through the injuries that have plagued this team. What a big win for them. Let's get on to Carissa Thompson. Carissa. Coach, can you put into words how enjoyable this game was for you to coach and what these seniors mean to you? Uh, no, I cannot. I cannot put into words, but um, what a gallant effort by our young men. A lot of credit to Wisconsin. Obviously, Brett young men fought their tails off, but great way to send our seniors out of here on senior day, and uh, we got one more, and that's what we'll be excited for. But now we get to go home and give thanks, and we've got a lot to be thankful for here. You said that this has been the most fun that you've had coaching, obviously, in your show, short coaching career. What is it about this team that makes them so special? Well, when you're a crude character young man, it goes back to the way they were raised back home and uh, to all the parents of all of our great young men and all the family members. The reason why they've got great characters is because of you, and we're thankful for that. And uh, it means the world to me today, especially the way that we honored Matt uh, before the game. Real special day. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Thanks Coach. so much. Go Cats. Guys. Matt being the uh, late Matt Hartle, the fullback on uh, Pat's Rose Bowl team back in the mid-90s. That's it from Evanston. Final score, Northwestern defeats 16th ranked Wisconsin 33 to 31. What a ball game in Evanston for Chris Martin and Carissa Thompson. I'm Wayne Larrabee. Next up, we send you to the State Farm Wrap-Up. Dave Revson in our Chicago studio.
Welcome in the State Farm post-game wrap-up. Great to have you with us. Dave Repson alongside Glenn Mason, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith. The regular season, in conference play anyway, is over in the Big Ten. Over. Hard to believe we will have a complete look back in all the day's action, and we will hear post-game thoughts from Pat Fitzgerald and Brett Bielema. We'll have complete post-game reaction on Indiana and Purdue as well. So keep it right here. You will hear from those coaches. Let's get you, though, right to the highlight of the game that we just had with Wisconsin and Northwestern. Ian Evanston, there he is, Brett Bielema and the Badgers looking for win number nine. Remember, they also head out to Hawaii then for that final game. You saw Corey Wooten, one of the many seniors for Northwestern, being honored on senior day. 21 NU players and all, including Andrew Brewer there on the receiving end from Mike Kafka. And the Wildcats take the early 7-0 lead. But first play of the second quarter, it's Scott Tolzien to Garrett Graham in what was at that point a 10-0 game. Down to the two-yard line, and then John Clay muscles his way into the end zone for his 13th rushing touchdown of the year, and the Badgers cut it to 10-7. To Later in the second, after a Northwestern fumble, what a great catch by Graham. Their tight ends are fabulous. Wisconsin, they've been great all year. Badgers go on top 14 to 10. And then on a third and nine, it's Kafka to Brewer. How about that catch by Brewer, who started at quarterback the last time Wisconsin played Northwestern at Ryan Field, now turned into a fantastic wide receiver. 17 14 Northwestern. And then Zeke Markshausen on the double pass to Sidney Stewart. Wildcats on top 24 14, went to the half on top 27 14. To the third quarter now. Wisconsin looking for a spark from David Gilreath. Has not had a great year, but Gilreath makes something happen here. 68 yards in the touchdown, and the Badgers are right back in it at 27-24. Late third quarter now. It's 30-24. Wisconsin down six, going for it on a fourth and two. Tolzien holds it a bit too long, and Vince Brown comes in, gets the sack. Northwestern takes over, and on the ensuing possession, it is Kafka looking for Sidney Stewart, not known as a big play offense, Northwestern, but they get 50 yards on that one, would settle for a field goal and a nine-point lead at 33-24. On to the fourth, it's Tolzien. It is Graham again, six catches, 98 yards, two TDs. Wisconsin down 33-31, but then John Clay, Fumbles it away, the Wildcats. Brian Peters recovers on the first Wisconsin turnover of the game. They would get the ball back one more time, had a chance, but this, their second turnover of the game. Jordan Maben with a pretty interception, and Northwestern hangs on to win it by the final of 33 to 31. So the Wildcats do get their eighth win of the year. The home team wins for the fifth straight time in this series for Wisconsin. It's three straight losses in Evanston. They have not won there since 1999. You see the numbers for Kafka, who had a big day as Wisconsin saw its 12-game win streak in the regular season against unranked teams come to an end. And for Northwestern, the good stuff just keeps piling up. Back-to-back -back eight win seasons for the first time since Pat Fitzgerald was a player in 1995 and 96. Two straight games against AP top 25 teams, going back to that game against Iowa. It's the first time they've done that since 2005, and they are guaranteed of being at least 500 for this decade. It's the first time they can make that claim since the 1940s. It's been a while. Just a little bit. Man. A lot of good performances in this game, Jerry, on both sides. But Mike Kafka really stood out when Northwestern needed him. You know, we went into the season wondering if Mike Kafka could throw the ball well enough to move the ball for Northwestern. He has thrown it all over the lot all year. He still can run, but they don't really use him that much running. How about 333 yards today? Just an incredible performance. He had uh, two touchdowns. But more important, no picks. He was just on target, made some great plays. He's got the legs to avoid. I mean, he really had a day. Yeah, Fitz told us at the beginning of the year right, that right. it's no question he can throw the ball. We're like, oh, oh, we were saying, what's he going to say? Right? Come I mean, on. You've got to be kidding us, right? 
but he can. He can. can. No question. Can. But yep. I think the tail of the tape here is what the defense was able to do when it came to slowing down or really shutting down the run game of Wisconsin. You talk about Clay going for 102 yards and a touchdown, but for the most part, they kept him bottled up. They were committed to stopping the run forcing Wisconsin to put the ball up in the air in long distance situations and that was the key for them going out stopping the run game and they were able to get that done today. You know Howard to continue on the defense you know we talk quite a bit about the job that Mike Hankwitz has done the defensive coordinator in two short years and you know quite frankly we were disappointed in the performance of the defense early in the year and they kept getting better and better and better and you know how you judge a good defense when the game is on the line you look at those two last drives when wisconsin was rallying all of a sudden there was a questionable it passed interference call, but they didn't hang their head. They forced John Clay to fumble the ball, and the offense could run the clock out. They had a punt. They come up with an interception. Good job, Wildcats. The whole team improved. That, I mean, think about some of the non-conference wins they had early against the average opponents and the loss. Average. I mean, and teams the, that haven't won yeah. a game. Well, they barely beat. And the loss to Syracuse. But He's it really, nice to other people, yeah. just not to you. Right. <laughs> I, I know mean, that. It, it really speaks to the players that are on the team that they really respond to the coaching that they've been giving during the week. When they don't play well, they accept that and understand that they have to come out and play well that next weekend and it's really difficult sometimes to get young men to figure that out. Now, I think the defense thing really does speak volumes about the way that Pat Fitzgerald is kind of crafting this team in his own image. I mean you take a Wisconsin team that's averaging 200 yards oh. per game plus on the ground you hold them to 89 right. yards. Yeah. That's the it's kind of team do. that's it's the kind stuff. of team Pat Fitzgerald wants to win and they believe they're going to win. I mean this is now 24 times in the last 30 games decided by seven points or less that Northwestern's come out with a win. Well, you, we talked about it, talked about changing the culture last night, and it's no question that the culture has been changed for the Northwestern Wildcats. You know, Howard, when the piece that Jerry did with Arab Parsegian, what he was talking about, if you really believe, I thought I, it was, that was an old Pat Fitzgerald yeah. talking, because when you go up to see him up in Evanston, he talks about that all the time. Mm. He certainly does. We'll hear more from Pat Fitzgerald again coming up a little bit later in the show. We'll hear from Brett Bielema as well. Mike, Wisconsin is going bowling. It's possible that the destination, though, might have been adversely affected today as they fall at Northwestern. Still have the one more game at Hawaii, the Badgers do. Brett Bielema's team falling to the Cats and afterwards Bielema addressing the media. Well, they, they uh, you know, tackled very well. Um, I thought there were some plays that Looked like could really bend back early in the first half, and we were running up on the back of guys. And, and obviously, we got to get a clean read and a green, clean progression from uh, handoff to, to, the, to, the, to the read. And we weren't doing that, and then made some adjustments. I, I thought that we'd be able to come back in that second half and be able to run the football, but we just weren't able to. Well, in the, fir in the first half, especially, uh, you know, they, they uh, were going indie huddle. They were going hurry up, quick huddle, and then they were. Um, you know, there's two big plays I know were benders uh, off of number two with a with a three by one set that that bent in behind the linebacker and in front of the safety was big plays for him three times and anytime you can get so many yards without any time coming off the clock and they were able to you know line back up and do it again it, it was uh, you could definitely see our defensive guys around the heels a little bit. What happened when Isaac mishandled the, the, the ball on the kickoff and not know where he was? He well, he. he um, you know, he thought that he had muffed the ball going into the end zone, so he had to bring it out, which obviously the, the official was trying to help him out and signal a touchback as it was, and a uh, bad, bad decision. Brad, it's always easy to say, but it seemed like they had you on their heels from the moment when they took the two touchdown lead. You felt like they came out with a little more emotion on senior day. Were you able to match their intensity? Or... I, I, we knew it was going to be senior day. I mean, it wasn't anything. Uh, I think the biggest reason was they were able to, you know, get some quick easy yardage through the air and that was a, a huge factor on us our guys responded and came back I think uh, when we got the second touchdown and went up went up on them I felt pretty in control but obviously uh, weren't able to really ever stop them in the first half defensively and that was a big part of it. Brett, the uh, secondary play was that more what they were doing? Than well they uh, they did a good job of throwing and catching that's for sure um, you know I, I really like the way they respond our guys at the, in the locker room at halftime I said you know defensive guys you're gonna make some adjustments they had, they had a couple wrinkles offensively that we had to make sure we're all on the same page with um, but I thought they, that especially the secondary played much better in the second half and gave us a chance I think we held them to the two field goals and anytime you can 
you know, make field goals instead of touchdowns, that's going to be a positive thing. What was the reason for using the first time? So that is Wisconsin coach Brett Bielema. Obviously a lot of concern, particularly about the pass defense in this game. Are you surprised at all? Particularly after, you know, Purdue is probably the most similar spread to Northwestern's in the Big Ten, and yet they completely shut down Purdue. Northwestern, though, able to move the ball on them very effectively. Well, I, I was surprised at this game. Uh, you know, you know, we talked quite a bit here. Brett Bielma, young head coach, two, the first two years really came easy. Last year was tough. Got himself on the hot seat. Then all of a sudden, I mean, almost all the experts had them 10-2 and two and going to a great bowl. And you know the old saying, Jerry, in coaching, when you think you got it made, Disaster's right around the corner. Disaster today was the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, tough body language by Brett Bielema. I mean, he, he was hurting. I mean, you could see his eyes were down during most of the press conference. I was surprised when he was talking more about his defense than he was his offense mm -hmm. because the offense in these type of games, to keep the ball out of Northwestern's hands, you have to run the football. Well, that's the way Wisconsin's offense is built. So I was surprised at the press conference. Brett didn't talk more about their inability to run the football than he talked about the other side of the ball. Yeah, I thought one of the things that was key in his press conference when he was talking about the run, he was talking about the running backs couldn't get clean reads right. trying to get to the backside. And I'm telling you, when you go against a zone blocking scheme, the most important thing for your defensive line is to disrupt that scheme. That means get penetration. That means that defensive line of Northwestern was unbelievable today because they couldn't get those clean reads that they normally had been getting. You're right, because in that read, as you know, you want to make the cut as late as possible. You want to get the back into the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. and your, the penetration makes you make the cut sooner. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it over the last few weeks, how well this Northwestern defensive line has played, kind of gelling over the course of the year. We saw that again. I mean, when you can hold Wisconsin to 89 yeah. rushing yards in a wow. game. You are doing something really well. It took a while for Pat Fitzgerald to get to the podium in Evanston. He has done so, though, so let's listen in to the coach of the victorious Wildcats. Thank you, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Obviously, very happy and proud for our 21 great seniors. Um, if, if you're going to have your last game in your home field, that's the way to finish. And uh, you know, a lot of credit to Wisconsin. I, you know, it was a hard-fought game. What a battle. I mean, there, were, there was big plays in, in all aspects for both teams. And uh, uh, j just a tremendous battle, great Big Ten football game. And uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of our seniors. They've now put themselves in position uh, to, to, you know, really be the second uh, all-time winningest team in a two-year run in our program's history. And, you know, we'll, we'll get prepared for our next opportunity here uh, after the Thanksgiving break. But a uh, lot to be thankful for. A lot to be thankful for here as we embark on Thanksgiving week. Uh, 21 great young men that have been through a ton of adversity, and uh, they finished the way we expect them to finish as winners. And to go 3-0 in November, I think, is a statement of how we've grown as a team, uh, where we're at right now as a football program, and, and hopefully uh, uh, an indication of where we're going in the future. So very proud of our seniors. Cannot say thank you enough to our senior students. We had great fan support today, and uh, it was uh, just a great environment for college football. So with that, how about some questions? It's obviously the, the win over Iowa was bigger in terms of where Iowa was ranked, but was this your team's best performance in the year? Yeah, let me look at the video, but I thought as a team, I thought we really st stuck together, and I thought we just kept on fighting, and, you know, the big turnovers there in the, second, in the fourth quarter were critical. Uh, you know, we, we talk all the time about just keep fighting, keep swinging, and, uh, you know, I thought our guys did that today, and, you know, just obviously happy for our seniors. I mean, I can't talk about it enough. You know, it's, uh, it was a, a very special day today and a very emotional day, and, and then to, to, to honor Matt uh, and to have his father be our honorary captain uh, was a very emotional start to the game. And I, I thought our guys handled it well and, um, you know, came out and executed pretty well. Talk about the level of my campus play. Well, you know, I said to the TV folks yesterday when we met, I said I thought today was a battle for the Big Ten most valuable player between John and between Mike. And, uh, you know, I'm a little biased, obviously, but uh, I don't think there's any player in the conference that means more to his football team than Mike Kafka. And uh, to me, that's what an MVP is. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of great players in this league, and a lot of talent in this league, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I think Mike Kafka, obviously, is not only our MVP, I, I, th I believe he's an all-Big Ten quarterback and the MVP of the Big Ten Conference. So what do you think of John Kirsten? Interesting there. So Pat Fitzgerald lobbying for his player, Mike Kafka. I'll tell you, you look at what they lost off this offense last year. I mean, you lost C.J. Bechet, third in career passing yards, Tyrell Sutton, second in career rushing yards, and then they lost 629 career receptions off their team from last year. That was more than any team in the country lost. They had so much to replace, Howard. 
there might be an argument there for Mike Kafka. I think without a doubt, when you look at his numbers and you look at what he's been able to do for his, for his club, he's definitely put up the big numbers, and, and he means the most to his team. I think we still have to go look at the numbers. Obviously, he's going to lobby for his guy, which he should be doing, but he's making a strong case, very strong case for it. He's making a strong case for a heck of a November, too. I mean, 3-0, and Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin. I, I mean, I don't know that any of us would have predicted that they'd be 3-0 and in November, especially if you go back in September and you watch some of the non-conference games, which I mentioned earlier, and the Syracuse loss, and you say, okay, let's jump ahead and figure out what they're going to do in November. I don't know anyone would have said they're going to be 3-0. and Well, I'll tell you one thing, fellas. When you look at what they've accomplished and how they've improved in the team, you talk about the loss to Syracuse and the very disappointing, heartbreaking loss to Minnesota, and then to finish the way they did with three wins in November, Pat Fitzgerald, I'm lobbying for you, Coach of the Year. Mm. Done a heck of a job. I'll tell you, it's the first time the Wildcats have been unbeaten in the month of November since 1995. I remember what happened in 95. That was the Rose Bowl team that Pat Fitzgerald played on. Not going to the Rose Bowl this year, but they will be in a nice bowl and deservedly so.